How's it going, everyone? It's Jesse in the background. I will be right with you in just a little bit. Just getting my live feed situated. That's not it. There we go. <clears throat> What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Painting with Jesse. My name is Jesse, and I am your host and art instructor here on Painting with Jesse on Facebook. Let me lower my music a little bit. Get a little crazy with the Christmas music. Let me lower that just a touch. Hi everyone, hello, hello. So, just want to say hello. Uh, we're on here a little bit early just to kind of get things uh, prepped. I monitor my live feed here on my, on my laptop and I watch your comments and things like that. Let me lower the volume here just a little bit. All right, said lower the volume for my feed. Hi guys, how's it going? So today, obviously, this is what we're gonna be doing. We'll be talking about it once we get going right at the uh, Start time, which will be 3 p.m. West Coast time. I want to welcome everybody that's on here today. We already have quite a large group, so that is fantastic. Just want to remind everyone, especially if you're new, do not click on the links in the comments. We get a lot of spammers that jump on trying to get you guys to uh, go to different websites supposedly to watch the live feed of our session today. They basically, they're trying to trick you into giving them uh, your credit card information and uh, possibly trying to steal other identity information so please be careful with that they'll be they may pop up in the comment section they do so on most of my uh, live feeds so just be careful again stay away from any uh, links that you see in the comments section promising to take you to the live feed for today's event it happens right here on painting with Jesse if somebody could let me know in the comment section that you guys can hear me actually I could hear myself a little a moment ago so I'm sure it's okay but just let me say let me know hey guys or hey Jesse I can hear you everything's okay I would greatly appreciate that. Just want to do a quick sound check using you guys as my feedback. So a bunch of you guys already in the comment section. What's happening? Felicia Smith from Peoria, Illinois. Somebody from Nova Scotia. Who is this? Hold on a second. Barb Julu Julissian. I lost your I lost your name. It went by too quickly. All right. I'm getting a lot of people telling me that you guys can hear me. So that is amazing, fantastic. Um, so anyhow, guys, I'm here a little bit early. We're not going to get into details just yet. I'll cover those once we get going uh, at 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock my time. I know that this is broadcasting all over the place. <clears throat> We've got people from all over the United States, people from Canada. Uh, Puerto Rico also is in the house. Um, we're going to have Australia, England, who knows who, uh, who else is going to be joining us today, but people from all over the place. Uh, so anyway, just want to welcome everyone. I want to thank you guys for being here with me today. Like I said, I will be discussing the details here in just a little bit. <clears throat> once we get going but what I'd like to do is have everyone as you guys jump on please say hello in the comment section tell me who you're painting with or where you're painting from and who you're painting with okay I may not be able to see all your comments because they're going by really fast we already have about 450 devices on so that's a pretty large group just want to take a moment to let everyone know and I'll repeat this in a little while but the recorded version of today's video when it's all said and done when, we're, when it's all over with the recorded version will be available under the live tab on my main painting with Jesse page. So that's where you'll go find that if you can't paint with us live uh, or if you have to finish part way through, you can't finish the entire session live. Uh, you can find the recorded version under the live tab on the main painting with Jesse page. You go straight to the top. I can't remember which side of side, but it's over, near the top. There's a bunch of little tabs and you'll see one that says live. You click on that. And that's where you'll find the recorded version of this. You'll also find a bunch of these videos that are behind me. Uh, most of these back here are available for you guys to go back and watch the recorded versions of them. Okay. What's cool about the recorded versions, obviously, is you can pause, you can back up, you can skip, you can jump ahead, all kinds of uh, all that good stuff. Um, you don't have to follow along with the live version. Although I think the live versions are a lot more fun. Okay. Just want to let everyone know if you guys are not, uh, if you guys are new to the page, welcome. Welcome to all of you. Well, we've got a bunch of cool videos you can go back and do. A couple days ago, we did this one where you got to paint your own uh, Christmas family. Uh, I taught you guys everything on it except for how to draw the reindeer. The reindeer actually have little stencils 
you could email me for, or if you go to the event page, if you go under, under the event page on my main Painting with Jesse page, you'll find the details to all of the events in the comments section. You'll find stencils for the reindeer, for that one there. There's also a tutorial on this snowman. Oh, I see I've got two reindeers up right now. Okay, um, I've got this one with this one reindeer. But anyway, there's the snowman. We've got this cool truck painting behind me is up there. We also got this, we did this back in, um, I think it was November, maybe it was October. Don't remember now. But um, it's a great pumpkin, Charlie Brown, for the, those of you who would like to go check that out. That is also available on that tab. So with that one, I teach you how to draw everything from scratch, completely from scratch. There is a stencil for Snoopy. If you go to the event page, find that one. You'll see the stencil, the information on that stencil. Okay? Again, guys, I just want to remind everybody, and I see one right here at the bottom. There is a scammer already on here uh, trying to post a link. If you guys look in the comment section, one of the very last comments is from a, looks like the guy's name is Rahul, Rahul something. Anyway, that is a scam link. You'll see if I can ban him really quickly. So basically those, that link right there, it says it's Charlie Brown Christmas virtual paint along go live and it has something HTTPS forward slash forward slash paste link. That is a scammer and there's going to be a bunch of other ones like that pop up. We try to ban them as quickly as we possibly can. I have the wife playing admin with me today. So I um, want to give her a big shout out. My wife, Eric, if you guys could all say hello to her. I think she's on here already. She's at home. I'm over at my studio, but she's helping with the admin part. She's helping ban uh, those posters when she sees them. So, but anyway, just kind of be on the lookout for those. If you do see one of those links, do not click on those. Those are scammers. As we go along, I will be uh, providing a step-by-step -step with every single piece of this. We are going to take some time painting today. It's going to be approximately two and a half to three hours. I know that may sound like a lot, but it goes by very fast. Okay, um, before you know it, I'm going, oh, wow, wow, we have 30 minutes left. Or look, two hours have gone by. Um, there is a process to this. We can't rush through it. Just want to remind everyone, okay, we take our time. So let me say hello, hello to some of you that are on the comment section. What's happening? Janine LeBlanc Fisher. Hi there, here with my girls. Hi, Janine. Hi to you and your girls. Constance M. Cotta is back. What's happening, Constance? Thank you for coming back. Uh, a bunch of you guys are new today. Uh, and I want to say welcome to all of you. I also want to say welcome to all of you that have been following along uh, with my page for a while. There's a bunch of you that keep coming back, and that is fantastic, amazing. I love it. Uh, so I want to say thank you to you guys and welcome. Um, there's another scammer. Peggy Simmons, how's it going? From Canada. That's all I got to see from your comment because it went by really fast. Again, there's a bunch of spammers on right now. I'm trying to ban them as quickly as I see them, but it's not always easy to do so. Uh, the comments go by really fast. Do avoid those links in the comments with those people trying to um, uh, spam the board, okay? Natalie Johnson, what's happening to you and Luke? How's it going? Uh, Constance says she's got more canvases today. Fantastic. But anyway, folks, we're going to get going here pretty quickly. Um, so again, as you guys jump on, uh, please say hello. Tell me where you're painting from, who you're painting with. Uh, and uh, I'll try to say hello to you guys. I can't catch every single comment that pops up. It goes by really quickly. We've already got quite a large group. I expect approximately about 600 devices are going to be painting at the same time, which is pretty amazing. Right now we're about at 545, but we don't officially start till about till right at three o'clock. So, okay. But um, Mary Blair, what's happening? Jan Shaft, how's it going? Donna Baker's back. Emily Galindo, how's it going? Emily, how are you? Michelle Montute from Montana is what I saw. Again, the comments go by so quick I can't catch them all. But beware of the scammers in the comments. Got a whole bunch of them that I see popping up. I know they were going to be, I knew they were going to be enforced today because um, when I went over to the discussion board, actually uh, the last few hours, I go check on the discussion board just to see how things are going to answer questions that people might have before the event starts. And I see spammers on there just bombarding the discussion board. Now I have to go through there and ban them. Now I can ban, once I ban, let's say the um, author of a particular post and they, so one guy will go in there and post a whole bunch of them, as many as he can. I block him. He can't post anymore, but his other buddies or whoever else is also trying to spam is doing their own post somewhere else. So i got to jump around trying to get those out of there. Anyway, because I saw a whole bunch of them on the discussion board, I knew there was going to be a whole bunch of them today uh, with our event. So just be careful. Don't click on those links. Um, they're just people trying to, uh, you know, to, um, to scam you guys. So don't click on those links. But from what I understand, they take you to another website 
where they try to charge you for the event. Uh, my uh, Painting with Jesse events so far only happen live here on Painting with Jesse. I do record the video and then eventually goes up on, on YouTube, or at least I try to get them up on YouTube, although I'm quite behind on those right now. But um, right now, the only live feeds that happen are here on Facebook. Okay, so if you see anywhere else that, um, you know, somebody's trying to get you banned from page, buddy, you're gone. I got this RJ Rayad. Get out of here, buddy. Bombed. He's gone. Anyhow, yeah, as quickly as we see them, we try to get them out, but it's it's tough to do. It's, it's uh, tough to keep up. Anyway, folks, it is 3 o'clock. Official start time. Fantastic. My name is Jesse. You guys are on Painting with Jesse here on Facebook. I want to welcome all of you guys to our Charlie Brown Christmas event today. I want to thank you guys for being here with me. Uh, I'm your host and instructor here on Painting with Jesse. I'm going to be teaching you guys step by step how to recreate this entire piece. Let me lower my volume just a touch. I'll get that Christmas music going uh, once we get going with the actual process. <clears throat> but I'm going to be teaching you this from scratch. What you're going to need is obviously something to paint on. I'm going to be using a 16 by 20 inch canvas just like this one. But whatever you have is what you'll be using. The materials that I'm using, of course, we're going to need a pencil with an eraser or something to draw with. Whether you're tracing the stencil that I provided or you're drawing freehand, completely freehand with me, you're going to need something to draw with. I'm using a pencil with an eraser. You can also use chalk. You can use anything that you can erase. Uh, so make it easy on yourself. Make sure you're not doing this in pen or unless you're a really good artist, really good drawer, which you know some of you absolutely are. But um, I would say you want something that you can erase like chalk or pencil. I'm going to be using, doing mine in pencil. We'll be drawing first. We're going to be drawing our characters first. Actually, we're going to draw Charlie Brown first. And then we work, some, work in some of the background. Later, we add Snoopy and his Snoopies and, and his doghouse and the Christmas tree all gets added afterwards. But first, we're going to be drawing Charlie Brown. Okay. The colors that I'm going to be using, I'm using acrylic paint. Same thing goes for uh, whether you're painting, using markers, colored pencils, whatever it is that you have, that's what you're going to be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint and the basic colors I'll be using is a blue for the background, um, blue for his, uh, Charlie Brown's pants, I got some red, I've got some white, yellow, green, those are the basic colors, but there's ornaments in there, ornaments up on, on the doghouse that you can change up colors on, etc, etc. Everything on the piece is customizable, which basically means you can make out of it whatever you want. You want to add something, you want to remove something, it's entirely up to you. When we're all done at the very end of the session, whether you finish with me today or tomorrow or the next day, I do ask that you guys send me pictures. I love to see your work. I'm a little bit behind on the last two events. I haven't had a chance to uh, share all the pictures that I've got, but I will be sharing those sometime tomorrow. Same with this painting today. Please send me pictures. You'll send them to me on Messenger here on Facebook. All you'll do is go right to Painting with Jesse when you're all done. Take a picture. I, I would love for you guys to be holding your painting, whether you're painting by yourself or in a group. It's fantastic to see the, your faces along with your paintings, but if you guys are a little shy, which I totally understand, just send me a picture of your painting and that'll be perfectly fine. But you send it to me on Messenger here on Painting with Jesse, it just makes it easier for me to keep track of them. And then when I get a whole bunch of them, I share them all in a big batch. People love to see all the variations of pieces that people create. I'm going to be using uh, plates for my, can for my palettes. I'll be pouring my paints onto this on these here and then this is where I mix them and create my colors and stuff. I'm recycling, I'm trying to recycle as much as I can so these are old um, papers that I've used, uh, paper plates that I've used for my palettes. But I'll be using a couple of these to put my paints on and paint. Okay, so anyhow, there's another scammer. Let me, let me get him out of here. Whoa, and he's gone just like that, disappeared. That was too fast. Uh, let's see, let's see if I can get him. There he is again. Uh, maybe, uh, can't get him anyway. Again, avoid those scammers. All right, folks, here we go. We're about to get going. Got a really large group today, so it's going to be a fantastic event. They always are, but the more of you that are on here with me, the better it is, the more fun we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and prep my station here. I'm going to uh, bring up my easel. Oh, I didn't mention, for those of you that have one handy, I will be using a blow dryer in between a couple of my steps to help speed up this, the uh, the drying process. Acrylic paint, for those of you that are working with acrylic paint, tends to dry pretty quickly, but for uh, time's sake, I will be using, likely be using a blow dryer here to 
blow dry some a couple of the steps okay so if you guys have one handy perfect don't worry if you do not have one you're going to be okay um, but so that is one thing that i forgot to mention i'm going to go ahead and um, move our camera forward here i want you guys to get a really good close-up of what it is that i'm doing so um, you're mostly going to see just the canvases let me see here let me make an adjustment just making some adjustments what you guys want to be doing right now like I said, we're gonna be drawing first. So you wanna get your pencils or whatever it is that you're gonna be drawing, get those ready, okay? Give me just a couple minute or so to prepare here. Get yourselves nice and relaxed. We're gonna have some fun, even if you're really new to art, which the vast majority of you guys, from what I understand from our uh, conversations that I sometimes have with you, the vast majority are pretty new to art. And that is perfectly fine. Okay, even if you're really new, even if you're brand new to it, I'm going to walk you guys step by step on everything. So I don't want you guys stressing. The priority to all this is to have fun. Okay, enjoy the process. Uh, relax, right? Um, let's enjoy some time together here. You'll be able to communicate with me through the comment section. I'll let you guys know when I'm looking at that in between steps or as I'm painting rather. I'm typically looking over here, I'm not looking at the comments. In between steps, as I give you guys time to implement the previous step, I will look at those comments and answer questions, say hello to a bunch of you guys, et cetera, et cetera. I want to stress that this will take some patience. We can't speed through this. For those of you that have your stencils, hopefully you've already got them cut out. Okay, what the stencils look like, and I don't have them with me, I don't, I'm not gonna be using them, so that's not really important. A couple of things I wanna point out. Uh, whatever size canvas or paper, etc., that you're using to draw this on, to paint this on. My Charlie Brown here, his height is approximately halfway. So if I was to take him and put the edge of his feet down at the bottom of the canvas, he's about 10 inches high. My canvas is 20 inches high. Okay, so just for reference, that's about, he's about half as tall as my canvas is high. Okay, so you can change that up. Maybe you've got a smaller Charlie Brown, maybe he's a larger Charlie Brown in proportion to the size of paper or canvas that you're using, but that's all up to you. Okay, what I want you guys to do is this. Those of you with your stencils, go ahead and position him um, and go ahead and start to trace him, trace him out. We're gonna be drawing, those, those of you that are drawing by hand, we're gonna do all of this um, from scratch. It's gonna take us a little bit to, to finish Charlie, maybe about 15 minutes, and then we're going to paint, okay? So get your pencils ready or chalk or whatever it is that you're gonna be doing this with. Because here we go. What I want you guys to look at is halfway on my original canvas is about right here. Okay. So just to kind of give you a gauge, this is about the middle, about the middle of my canvas. I don't need to measure it or anything, anything like that. We're just eyeballing. His head, the top of his hat, is a little bit above that. If halfway is right here, just to kind of give you a gauge, that halfway mark is about where his nose is. About. And then, of course, he's not in the center like this. Center is about right here. He's slightly left of center we got a little space over to the right where the tree is we're gonna have a nice horizon line that cuts behind his head where the snow is or snow horizon line that goes all the way across and then of course we got snoopy and his uh, house over here those of you with your stencils go ahead and position your charlie brown so he's a little bit up off the uh, bottom of your canvas this is about an inch and a half or so unless you want him all the way down it's up to you but go ahead and start to trace them out. Those of you that are drawing with me, here we go. Get your pencils handy. You want all of you, whether you're tracing this or whether you're drawing it by completely from scratch, you want to do really light pencil lines to begin with. Nothing dark. The reason we do, we do light pencil lines is so it's easy to erase them if we need to make corrections. And you will see me erasing. It's all part of the process. Okay, what we're going to start with is Charlie Brown's head. Charlie Brown's head is approximately, if we're, if we're not counting the ears, he's about three and a half inches wide. Okay, this right here is about three and a half inches wide. So we're going to go right about right here. And all we're going to do is lightly, we're going to draw, draw a nice little curved line. And watch how I do this, nice and light. There's nothing fancy about this. I'm making several lines until I get my curve right. I'll check in a moment what it looks like on my feed to make sure that you guys can see this. I know this is rather light. Okay. Once I have the shape that I want, I'll take a little step back and look at it. I'll go ahead and darken it up a little bit. 
So now you guys can see this at home, okay? All those extra lines that I did a moment ago, I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to erase those, okay? But you, you, again, you want to do this really, really light at home. I'm going to go ahead and make a little adjustment down here. Whoops, fix, his, uh, fix the bottom part of his head a bit. And all I'm going to do is bring that over. Those of you with a stencil, what you guys want to do is you want to draw your the bottom part of Charlie Brown's face. Okay, this, that bottom edge right here on, on the neck, cut across that neck. Okay, so we've got the bottom part of his head, of his uh, face. We're going to come up like this to the top. Okay, we got his hat, cuts across, right? And all that hat is going to do is get, it's going to do this. Nice and curved. And it slightly dips. So it's a little lower on this side than it is on that side. Nothing fancy. Just go ahead and drop in, in a nice little light line. Keep in mind, folks, a lot of this is going to be erased. Okay. Oops, got a scammer. Let me see if I can get him out of here. Out of here, buddy. Okay. So we've got the top of Charlie Brown's head. Those of you with your stencil, go ahead and add that line in there. The top of our hat. Okay, so now that we've got that line across right there, we're going to go ahead and make that, we're just going to create, this is like a slightly curved, long rectangle. So we're just going to draw a little line that comes up. It doesn't have to be too high. Your hat can be different sizes, right? But this is that, that the green part of that hat. We're just going to go up a little bit on both sides, a little bit like this, and then we're going to connect those. Again, keep your pencil lines nice and light. When we paint over all of this is when things are going to make more sense. Take a little steps back, look at your drawing, see if you need to make any corrections. All I'm going to do right here is his face is a little bit less round. It's a little more ovalish than what I originally started with. So just making a little correction. Don't worry about erasing, it's all part of the process. Okay? We got the, we got the head in place. We're gonna draw the top part of the hat. Couple little lines that go up on each side of the top of the hat. Bring those over and connect them at the top. Okay, I'm going to turn on a little bit of Christmas music here in the background. Don't want it too loud for now, especially while we're drawing. It's very important that you guys are able to hear me. So, you got about a minute to catch up on this right here. Okay, again, from time to time, take a little step back, see where you need to make little corrections. I'm just gonna make little adjustments here on the sides. Promise this is the last one. To the head anyway. Okay, there we go. But y'all, you sure do. Go ahead and you trace your stencil, okay? Trace that set and that stencil. Kathy Cute, how's it going, Kathy? Welcome back. Jesse, thank you so much for doing these sessions. It has been a difficult year, and I look forward to painting along. Fantastic, Kathy. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Okay, so we've got the head, we've got the hat. What we're going to do next is we're going to add a couple little lines here at the bottom for his neck. It's nice and narrow, nothing fancy. Just going to kind of do this. And then when you get at the bottom here, all you're going to do is give me a nice little curved line. We're going to, we're going to refine these later with paint. But for now, we just got a couple little lines down here. His neck's thin, just not super, super thin. Okay, just like that. It's always a little tricky for me on the perspective part because I draw over from the left side of the canvas when I'm doing these. Normally I'm right in front, so it's easier for me to see perspective, but over to the side, I can already see that this one's a little taller, a little higher up than on the original, but, and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, ever? And I, I just want to stress to everybody, everyone's painting is going to look a little different. So don't sit there stressing about trying to recreate this exactly like me. Those of you that have your stencil, if you you want to go ahead and add this little line down here for the neck. 
what we're going to do next is we're going to create his little coat. Now, his coat right here is about the same height. This right here is about the same height as his head is. So from here to here, it's about the same length as from here to here. So just as a little reference, so if you kind of did this to your, to your head and kind of took your fingers and did that down here, you have the bottom part of your jacket. Okay, so whatever size your head is, to kind of get the proportion right, you just bring that down to below the neck, you do this, you have a little line down here, and that's about the length of your coat. What you're going to do then is right over here from the neck, you're just going to curve a little line down, comes over like that. On the other side, the line's a little bit straighter until it gets to about right there, and then you kind of you change the angle a little bit where it's, it's a little bit steeper. So it comes out slightly angled and then a little less slightly angled. But again, for reference, this right here is about as high as the, his face, not, not including the hat, just the face. From here to here, it's about the same length. Okay, again, for reference, once you've got that, we're going to make these little pants. And these little pants here, these guys are about half the, his torso. From here to here is about the middle of that. So again, if you kind of, from here, you gauge where the middle is. You go like this, bring that down. You've got his little pants. A lot of times when you're drawing, you want to, th you want to look at those things. You want to gauge proportion and, you know, in comparison to, you compare the different parts of your characters or whatever is your subject. How does the head compare to the torso? How does the torso compare to the legs and the feet, etc.? So you got your little lines that go across like this, these little pant legs. You wanna put a little, little line down the middle. You're not gonna be able to see much of this when we color everything in, but just so you know that it's there. Your little lines. Okay, work on that for a minute or two. I just want to remind everybody of all the really cool events we've done here over the past months. We started this project or this these videos back in um, March, late March, I believe it was. And at first we started really slowly. Once every couple of weeks I'd have an event, then it became once a week. And then um, several a month. Remember guys, do not, do not click on those links. Bam from page, you're out of here. Delete, you're out of here. Yes, I want to delete that. What's up, Julie? How are you? Liliana's back. How's it going? Don't, there are people in the comments replying to some of your comments. You guys ask a question, you guys say something, and somebody goes in there and replies to you with a link. Okay, do not click on those links that they're posting. Uh, the only person that's posting links on here is my wife. Her name's Erica. Okay, she posts links on some of these events uh, when, or she answers some of your questions and stuff. But if you see like there's somebody on here, uh, uh, Mat Matthias Robert is posting something about a, uh, a Telegram link. Nope, do not click on that. Okay, avoid those. Looks like uh, Matthias is being super busy posting, uh, posting a whole bunch. I just banned him, but now I got to go through and check out all of his comments so I can so I can delete them. Parvin Parvin. Sorry folks, I know this is distracting, but I, but I just want to protect you guys also and get those out of here when I see them. Okay, so we got the pants, we got the coat. We're not going to do any detail on the inside of the coats uh, of the coat. We're just going to come down here to where the, where the shoes are. Let me just clean this up a little bit. The shoes, there's nothing really fancy about the shoes. Um, right down here, we just have a little line that comes up, comes over a little bit like this. That's the top of that shoe. Then it comes down to a little point. Don't, don't worry too much about your shoes. If you need to cover them up, if you don't like the way they come out, you can always cover them up with a little bit of snow. You can camouflage them a bit. So we got a little line back here. So we got this little line that we just, little curved line that goes up like this, and then it comes down a little bit. And then from here, you're gonna draw a line that comes back and connects over here. These are Charlie Brown shoes. Okay, nothing, nothing too detailed. Over here on this other side, Right in here, same same thing, little curved line that comes up, comes out to a little point, and then from there it comes back and connects to the other shoe. Right in here, you're just gonna go like this. 
Okay, let me give you guys a close up of those shoes. Check those out. Those Charlie Brown fancy shoes that he's got on. Okay, nothing to it. Okay, don't overthink it, folks. Just put down your pencil lines and move on. Those of you with your stencil, of course, you're, you're adding these little lines in there. You're adding your pant line, the, the, um, the line between the two pant legs. And oops, I made that all the way up because it didn't have to go all the way up. And then, of course, your jacket, right? Okay. We're going to add the little thing on top of his head in a moment. All right, folks, give me you guys a little time to catch up. I'm looking over at the comments. We've got quite a large group on here today. How the heck is this guy still? He's banned from the page and he's still commenting. How is that? So I still see that we got uh, Mr. Parvin Parvin and Matias busy in the comment section. Hi, Elsa, five years old. How are you? Sorry guys, I'm just looking at that feed and it's been, been bombarded. I'm gonna to try to uh, not be too distracted by all of that. Again, just avoid those links in the comments. Okay, so we've got Charlie Brown's head, we got his neck, we got his body, his legs. What we're gonna do is we're going to uh, do the little thing on the top of his head, the, this little guy up here on top of the top, it's like a little bush. Okay, that's all it is. There's a few little curved lines that can all connect. There's one at the top. Curve, curve, okay? We're not going to do anything with the details on any of this. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, start painting in our background. We're gonna uh, do some of the uh, base coats like on the face and the jacket and things like that. Then we'll come in later and add detail. For now, as far as the drawing part of it, that's all we have at this moment. So you guys, we're gonna start painting that background, okay? And we're gonna start with a blue. Right up in here, we have this this blue that we're gonna paint everything with. Uh, but actually, let's do one more thing. Right here, right across the top. We're gonna to just draw a little horizon line that goes like that. A little squiggly line that goes all the way across from one, one edge of the canvas to the other. From here up, we're gonna paint in blue, and from here down, we're gonna do in white, okay? So, get your paints ready. I'm going to get go ahead and grab me some dark blue. The blue that I'm using is a pretty basic one. I'm gonna turn up my Christmas music here for a little bit. Okay, grabbing an old plate here, just gonna pour a bunch of this blue here that I've got. And again, real basic blue color. The brand that I'm using is an artist's artist loft brand. I'm likely going to need two, at least two coats for the background to be really nice and blue. Okay, so this first coat is going to be a little bit transparent. Okay, I've got a cup with some water in it. I've got some brushes floating around. These are all synthetic bristle brushes. I've got this large two-inch flat brush. That's one of my favorites to use when I'm covering large portions of a background. So that's what I'm going to start with to create that blue area up on top. But before I do that, two things. When I, if you're new to acrylic painting, right? There's, I've got my water cup, I've got my brushes in there. I've got all my brushes floating in there. When I pull this out of the water, it's gonna be really drippy and wet. We use water to keep our brushes from drying in between steps. All I'm going to do is take a paper towel. I've got a bunch of these towel, towels handy. I just squeeze out a bunch of that extra water Music is a little bit loud. Next thing that I'm going to do, before I use that big brush to cover the background, 
I've got this other synthetic bristle brush. This is, a, this is about a half an inch in width. If you've got something similar to this, as long as the brushes you have, and let me go through my brushes here fairly quickly. I've got that big two inch brush you saw a moment ago. I've got this large three quarters of an inch flat brush. Okay, and by three quarters of an inch, I'm referring to the thickness, the width of that brush. Okay, I've got this little half inch one that I'm about to use here in a moment. I'll explain all the, what I'll be doing with that. Then I've got a couple of other small brushes, this little quarter inch one. Again, I'm referring to the width. All of these are synthetic bristle brushes and I got a really tiny um, liner brush or round brush. Okay, this guy is for my detail work. Those are the main brushes that I'm using. So what I'm doing right now is with this brush right here, I'm going to take this, before I start painting, really getting into my background, I'm just gonna outline. I'm gonna outline the edge right in here that I just drew out with my pencil. Just gonna come across. And if you guys notice, the blue is going to be transparent, especially on the first layer. Okay, it's the uh, acrylic paint is transparent. There is, there is um, depending on how thin the layer is, you can get really get it to be really transparent and you see a lot of that background coming through. We get rid of that by doing layering. On this first layer, we're not gonna be worried about that. We're just gonna put down our layer of paint. Once we've outlined Charlie Brown's head and the horizon line, we're just gonna come in here. I'm using my big brush to cover a lot of area fairly quickly. Just be careful, you don't wanna paint over Charlie Brown's head. I wish I could pay, play some uh, Peanuts music, but it's copyrighted stuff. And I start, if I start playing that, uh, Facebook will block my, my feed. It will put a stop to my video. The algorithm will pick it up and stop it, or likely stop it. So we can't have that. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm spreading paint all throughout the background using long brush strokes. Just keep loading up my brush. Come up here. Again, nice long brush strokes. I spread that paint across. I'm using horizontal brush strokes. You can use vertical ones if you'd like. Up to you. In other words, you can go up and down all the way across. But these long brush strokes are what creates that smooth background. Okay, you could also, if you wanted to, you could do little choppy lines going in different directions. Little X's like this. Bob Ross used to demonstrate his little X's all the time. But up to you, whichever, however you'd like your background to look. If you want a really nice smooth background, long brush strokes. Okay, careful again when, when you're going around Charlie Brown's body. You may need to go back to a smaller brush to kind of clean up some of those edges that I like I've got here that are kind of bright. I do like to paint my edges to usually to match the front. So the edges of my canvas, I'll do this. My sides. You don't have to do this. It's up to you. Whoops, whoops. Let me turn that over. All right. Then we're going to go over the top. I know a lot of you guys are using other mediums, watercolor, markers, etc. All good. And I think I just realized I didn't put my phone, I'm using my phone to record this. I didn't put it on silent. So from time to, from time, to time throughout the event, you're going to hear some buzzing. I do apologize about that. I got too busy trying to uh, ban the scammers. My phone might even ring in between. I just, re I just realized. I apologize about that, folks. Those scammers got me really distracted before I started. I was out there on the discussion board, busy getting rid of a bunch of them there, and I didn't put my do not disturb on. So anyhow, if you get a little vibration coming through, if you hear some vibrating, or maybe my phone will even ring, please disregard that. So just gonna take a smaller, my back to my little brush. Just gonna come back around and clean up the edges around Charlie Brown's hat. 
We will be doing another layer to this background here in a bit. Don't worry about it too much for now. Again, it's going to be a little transparent, a little see-through. No big deal. Do not sit there stressing too much about that on this step. You're going to fall behind if you sit here trying to make it all super even on this first pass. Hardly ever works out on the first pass, okay? So give you guys about a minute on that, maybe a minute and a half, and we'll get on to the next step. Got a whole bunch of you guys on here, which is fantastic and amazing. Yeah, Constance, sorry about that. I apologize, Constance says, I thought it was my cell phone doing that buzzing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm afraid that's going to be happening throughout the um, process. Virginia Alexander, I sure am. Uh, this goes for all of you. Again, I am recording this session. As soon as this live session's over, I'm going to hit save and it goes and lives under the live tab on the main Painting with Jesse page here on Facebook. If you go to the very top of the page, click on the live tab, you'll see this video there that you can play back whenever you want. Pause, forward, rewind, all that good stuff. Um, and then all the other sessions that we've done over the past months are there as well. What's happening, Hannah? Welcome back, Hannah Herrera. Good to have you. Joanna Lerma, how's it going? Jo oh, Joanne. Joanne Lerma, how are you? So I'm looking over at the comment section, folks. Got about 30 more seconds and we're going to add some snow. We're going to add some uh, snow to the bottom. Hey, Ram. Uh, yep. Sometimes, hey, folks, if, you're, if you have a hard time keeping up, um, do your best. Yes, there is a particular pace that I maintain throughout. I try to kind of maintain a rather medium pace where most of you guys can keep up. But I understand everybody paints at different paces. Everybody paints at a different speed. Some of you that are experienced can paint, take your like to take your time some of you that are experienced might like to go really quickly but some of you that are new want to go slow etc etc right everybody has a different pace i'm going to do my best to try to make sure that you guys can all keep up but i also can't go so slowly that i lose a whole bunch of you okay so if you you know just do your best to try to keep up if you fall too far behind you may want to come back to the recorded version of this one when this is all done stay with me as long as you can and hopefully every one of you can stay to the very end we're all we're, we're, we all paint this together but um but yeah just understand that if you fall too far behind you'll have a chance to go to the to the recorded session of this the recorded session will be available at least till the end of the month if not longer so just stay stay with me as long as you can again don't get too bogged down on any one process for too long that background you just need to lay it down just like i did right put it down and then we move on to the next step. We're gonna go back and do another layer over it to clean it up a little bit, make it a little bit more, a little smoother and a little bit more even, okay? All right, let's see. Yep, yep, Ian Daniels, all the other videos are up on top and Charlie Brown will be, you have to do Charlie Brown Friday replay. Ooh, that'd be kind of cool. All right, here we go. Gonna take some white now. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of white and a little bit of the blue that I just used. You can also use a little tiny bit of black. So again, I've got my old plate right here. I'm gonna grab some white paint. We're gonna put a layer of snow down, okay? So what I'm doing is adding some white. I'm going to take my three quarters inch brush. Again, as long as you've got something similar, you don't have to have the exact same brush as I do. Something similar. Again, these are synthetic bristle brushes. Um, my favorite to use, I'm going to take a little bit of blue, a little bit, and I mix it in. I can also take a touch of black and mix it in a bit. All I'm doing is creating a slight difference in color, okay? A slight difference. I'm basically toning my white so that it's not stark white. So I'm going to take a touch of black. And you notice I'm not putting the color, I'm, that black, I didn't put it right into my paint. I just grab a little bit at a time. Little tiny bit at a time, especially with the darker colors, it makes a big difference. And it doesn't have to be perfectly blended. What I mean by that is I can have some swirls in there where I see a little bit more blue, a little bit more gray, etc. Once I've done that, I'm going to take this brush, and again, same thing, I'm going to go ahead and I outline my edges first. Folks, trust me, three hours will go by super fast. Before we know it, we're going to be... It's going to be like two hours in. I'm going to say, hey, guys, we've got an hour to do, you know, to finish the rest of this. So 
Um, if we go too slowly, we'll be painting well into four hours and the majority of you guys have things to do. We don't want to do that. Okay. I mean, it is fun. I love painting. You know, I can paint for hours, but I know a lot of you guys, you know, have things to do. So we outline everything first and I'm going to come in here and when I do my brush strokes, I am going side to side. Again, the paint that I've got mixed here is a little streaky. I've got some areas that are lighter blue, some areas that are a little more gray, some areas that are lighter, just almost white. That's what I want. On the original, I, I first painted the whole background blue, all of it, and then I painted white over it. But if I would have done that, and that's an option, you could, I mean, that would work just fine. Um, I would have had to have used a light chalk to do my drawing because I would have had, I would have drawn. Oh no, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm confusing my instructions here. Um, I could have done the entire background first and then drawn over the top of it and then put the snow uh, down. That helps by putting the background down first to create a really light or really smooth background all the way through. And then you can draw over the top of it. But for this painting, I felt it was more appropriate, appropriate to draw it first and then lay down the background. But on the original, it's blue all the way down. Then I drew Charlie Brown and then I put snow, the snow after. But all right, different ways to approach a painting. There's no one set way to get similar results. Some of you that have been painting for a little bit know what I'm talking about. And for those of you that are new, just want you guys to understand that there are different steps and different approaches. What I do may be different from, from what others do, but we all end up with similar results, okay? But all right, so there's the front of my canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and do my edges. So again, I'll just take some of this same color. I'm going to turn my canvas like this so I can get over to the side. I want to do this without knocking stuff over. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to do this. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the process. I always have a lot of fun doing these little events. 2021 is going to have a whole bunch of them. Got all kinds of really cool stuff planned. So stay tuned if you guys are new to the page and haven't liked it yet or followed it yet. Please do so when you have a chance. On the main painting with Jesse page at the top, you'll see a follow button or a like button. Click on that and then you'll get notifications whenever I post something or whenever I post new events and things like that. So I'm not going to paint the very bottom edge till, till the very end. What I mean by that is this here. Because I'm sit, I'm ha I have my canvas on an easel, if I paint this edge now and I set it back down, it's going to glue the canvas to the easel and it can be difficult for me to take it off at the end. So for now, I'll leave that for, uh, for the very last step. Just ensure that you clean up your edges around Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown's body. All right. All right. Take a couple minutes on that. I've got a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Laverne is asking. Hi, Laverne. 16 by 20 inch canvas. Pauline Cynthia Farrell. Yep, I think you might have heard of me by now, but um, the video will be available afterwards. Just go on over to the Painting with Jesse page here on Facebook. You go to the top, click on the live tab, and you'll see this and all the other videos there as well. All right. So, all right. Hi Elsa, how's it going? From Saskatoon. Thank you for being here today. Let's see. Joanne, so this should be about three hours. Okay, we are gonna paint. I mean, we might cut it down to two and a half, it just really depends. But we're gonna probably be doing about three hours worth of painting today. So Again, for those of you that don't have the time to stay the whole time through, don't worry. Just paint for as long as you can and then just come back to the recorded version. Okay? So don't want you guys uh, freaking out too much about, um, 
about having to paint for three hours. Yeah, it seems like a long time to paint, but like I said, it will pass very quickly. Okay, so got about another minute. We're moving on. Let me turn, let me turn my music up here a little bit. And again, folks, I just want to remind you that if you're Charlie Brown fans, I know a whole bunch of you guys are Peanuts fans. Last, I want to say this was uh, late October or early November. I can't remember now, but we did this one. Same thing. Taught you guys entirely how to draw this from scratch. And this one did take about, right about three hours. I did make a stencil available for Snoopy's body. Okay, you'll have to email me for that one. Painting with Jesse at gmail.com. Painting with Jesse at gmail.com. Jesse J E S S E. Just how the, the name of the page is spelled. But then we drew everything else from scratch. Okay? The event, if you were to go look on the event tab, this will be one of the old events and all the details for the supplies are there. Basically, the only difference is the colors, right? Everything else is the same. Okay? If you guys are interested in that. Again, for all of you Peanuts fans out there, I know there's a whole bunch of you. But all right, so Jesse, what's the next step? So here's what we're going to do. As the background here is drying, as this is drying, and on mine, this is already almost dry. I may not even have to bust out my blow dryer, we'll see. What we're going to do now is we're gonna start painting a layer, one layer on everything. Okay, first thing that I want to do is paint red here and the top of his hat, we're gonna paint that all in red. So get your red out, get one of your smaller brushes out. Okay, so just gonna take some red, pour it right onto my plate. I'm going to take one of my smaller brushes. Maybe this little guy right here. I'm gonna start with a hat. This little quarter inch brush. Okay, just dip it right into the brush, into the paint. I'm gonna come up here. Now, again, this every layer that we're doing so far is a first layer of paint. What that means is that it's going to be transparent. If you're painting pink up or uh, red over white it might look a little pink don't worry about that put your paint color down put your layer down and we move on we're going to come over here we're going to paint the inside of his jacket outline first all the details on the inside of the jacket will come later okay for now we're just coming through here when you paint the inside of the jacket, do long brush strokes like this. Use your brush like this, wide, the wide side like this, and you're gonna paint up and down, long brush strokes. What that does is you're already creating that length. You're giving the, the coat some shape. You can also do this. You can paint slightly over to the, to the edges. You, cur you paint towards the edges and then down. Kind of follow the curvature of your of your jacket, and then just smooth your brush, you know, your um, brush strokes a little bit. Smooth your paint a bit with your brush, kind of like this. Again, don't stress too much about how transparent it is right now. It's going to be transparent. What I do want you to do is over here on the edge, over here somewhere, you probably want to do, do this with pencil first. Okay, this part right here, his little hand, his little arm, you can still see, you can barely see on the other side. Right over here somewhere, you're just gonna draw a nice little, just a little kind of curved line where his little hand is in his pocket on that side. Let me give you guys a close up of that. The reason we're adding that in right now is so we can add some paint over it. And look at my brush strokes. A little transparent, right? Again, don't worry too much about how even your colors are now. Look at that hat. Transparent, uneven colors. Okay, we're not worried about that on this step. So again, don't get bogged down. Brushing over the same area a bunch of times, times trying to clean that up. I know a lot of people's OCD will take over and you're sitting there going, oh, but that area is lighter than this area, why? That's how it works on this step. 
put your color down and move on. Okay, so then go ahead, once you've drawn that little area in on that side, color it in, and then up here on the collar, up on top, all you're gonna do is bring out a little tiny bit of paint. I'm just gonna add a little line that comes down like that. That's the outer edge of that collar that you see a little bit, and you'll do the same thing on the other side, just a little bit. This will all make more sense later, but for now, a little brush stroke right here, a little brush stroke of paint right there. It don't look like much for now, so don't expect for it to look like much. So I added a little brush of paint right there, and then another one on that side. Let me give you guys about a minute there. Awesome Penny. Penny says I reported a scammer. Lukeman Anadu Amandu, you are a scammer and you're getting banned. <laughs> And then your comments getting deleted. Merry Christmas to Dylan from Sandora. Is that right? Or Dylan Sandora? Oh, Dylan Sandora. Merry Christmas to you. Yep, you sure can, Penny. Again, that video is available for you to watch. The one that I just showed you um, for the um the great pumpkin that video is available just go to that live tab what's happening lorraine from winnipeg canada okay banning some more people from the page not sure why they decided that today was the day to blast us with spam Let's see. All right. Okay. So a little bit of blue. Now I'm going to take some blue for the pants. And the blue can be the same color as the blue in the background. I'm going to leave mine that same color again. Um, so whenever you, I'm going to use the same brush that I just used a moment ago. So it's full of paint. It's got red paint on it. Just going to slosh it around my water cup a few times. I take it out. And then I take a paper towel and just take out any extra paint, okay? All right, back to just blue in this case. I'm just grabbing a bunch of blue. And then what do we do right here? Again, long brush strokes. You can outline first. And then long brush strokes downwards. So this color is a lot more transparent, right? If you compare it to the original, once we do another layer or two, it's going to get a lot darker. There we go. I'm going to take out a little bit of brown for the shoes. Don't worry, I'm going to move on to the shoes really quickly and then I'm going to give you guys a little time to catch up. Okay, but I'm taking some brown. It's got some basic brown out here, just dipping my brush. Same brush that I was just using a moment ago. Dipping it, I cleaned it up a little bit with my paper towel. I don't always have to dip it into my cup. I just use paper towel to squeeze out any extra paint. Just gonna come in here and then again, One layer of paint. I mean, lay down, put your layer of paint down. This will also require a second layer later. I know that it can be difficult to uh, To tell your brain to relax a little bit when you're seeing, you know, if you're kind of 
real particular and you see all the uneven colors coming in right now your brain your brain's telling you come on you can fix that you can do it do not worry about that you're gonna by trying to clean all that up again if you're working with acrylic paint you're just gonna fall behind that gets fixed by adding second and sometimes third layers look at those shoes an even in color and even tone look at those pants okay so again put your layer of paint down and move on all right you guys got about a minute and a half to get all that in Merry Christmas Scarlett how are you in Toronto thank you for being here Muscan eight years old from Calgary Canada hi Muscan how are you or Muscan Michelle Jalinas or Galinas says hi from Edmonton Alberta hello to you in, in Edmonton Jackie Alst from Nevada. How's it going, Jackie? Iram, Merry Christmas to you. Josephine, how are you? Okay, if you do not have brown, great question. If you've got blue, yellow, and red, you can mix those together to make brown. Blue, yellow, red. Okay, and you'll have to kind of play a little bit with the with the ratios, but you'll get it pretty quickly. Uh, I would start with yellow, introduce a little bit of blue, and then a little bit of red. And slowly you'll see, as you're adding to those colors, you'll see it become brownish, okay? So again, yellow, red, blue to make, to make brown. Carla J, how's it going? Connie, how's it going, how are you? Let's see, Lisa from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Merry Christmas to you and good grief. Yeah, good grief. Gracie Garcia, happy holidays from Texas. Happy holidays to you all the way out to Texas. Renee and Sharon say hi from Weberville, Michigan. How are you, Renee and Sharon? Thank you for being here. Hope everyone's having a fantastic uh, time. Renee James from Seattle, born in Riverside. R uh, you mean Riverside, California? We're talking about Riverside, California, I'm thinking, because uh, that's, you'd be my neighbor. I'm in Riverside County. Okay, here we go. What are we going to do next? Uh, white, we're actually going to paint in the face color, the skin tone, and the entire face is going to have uh, a little bit of, a little bit of the same color, right? Uh, it's like a, it's like a light pink. If you don't have a skin tone and you have red and white and a little bit of yellow, we can make some. So let's go ahead and mix that skin tone. Give me one second. So I'm going to take my little half inch brush, this guy right here, cleaned it up a little bit, removed, it has some blue in it so I Again, I sloshed around inside my water cup. I take my paper towel and squeeze out extra water from it. I need some white, some red. If you have pink, you can just add a little tiny bit of, depending how pink it is, you can add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. You can also even add a little bit of brown. It just depends on the hue that you're going for. So I've got some red right here. I've got, sorry, red right here. and I've got some white right here. Let me grab a little bit of yellow. So again, if you've got a pink already, simply add a little bit of white to it and maybe a little bit of yellow. Everyone, everyone's skin tone for their, for, their, for their Charlie is gonna be a little different. So don't stress too much. Cartoon characters, especially these guys, have a very pink, very light pink tone. But it's really, really, really light. So again, some white. Okay, I got some white right here. Just gonna add a little touch of red, a little tiny bit. Don't need much. Red will overpower the white very quickly, so we don't want to add too much. Okay, that's a little too pink. So and what I do is this. Once I've got the mixture, I'll go like this. I'll bring it up to the canvas and oh, maybe I'm gonna take a touch of yellow now. That both lightened it up and it toned down the pink. Now, it wasn't much, I just barely touched it. Brought that over. Now you need to mix enough to cover the entire face and the neck. 
So just kind of eyeball it a little bit. You'd rather have much more mixed than less, than not, not enough. Because if you don't have enough, as you start to cover the face and you've, you run out and you have to mix it again, matching your original color might be a little difficult. And we're gonna do this, we're gonna layer this a couple of times. So make sure you mix quite a bit of it. Some white, a little bit of yellow, little touch of yellow to tone it down. And then some of you, just depends on your color, and the color that you want, you might want to add a little touch of brown. Once you've got your color in there, you're just gonna come inside and What I like to do so that the face doesn't look flat, I like to kind of follow the curvature with my brush strokes. Maybe at the top I'll brush across like this, but here, especially towards the bottom, I like to curve my brush strokes. And again, I'm using the three quarters inch flat brush that I've got here. These have technically their number, they have numbers on them, but I just like to describe to you the physical qualities of it and you can gauge whether you've got something similar to this or not. Anything similar to this brush will be okay. Then let's not forget the neck. Okay. There we go. So work on that for a couple minutes. And again, I just want to point out that as we're working around these other areas, as we're jumping around putting our first layer, my back layer is already, this blue layer up on top is already dry. In just a little bit, I'll be able to come in here with another layer of blue. And while we're at that, we're gonna do another layer of blue on the pants, okay? So, and then what I, what I do like to do, at the end, I will be outlining most everything in black. So if you have pencil lines that you can see, just try to cover them up as best as you can with your paint. In the end though, we're gonna come over with a little bit of a, a dark color, black preferably, preferably, and then we'll outline everything in black. We have his ears to do here. We're going to add those here in a moment. The ears here, right? We've got the left ear and the little ear over there. A little bit of the ear. So as soon as you've covered up the face, you're going to take your pencil. And you're going to add a nice little... part of a curve, part of a circle. Okay, it needs to be bigger. Again, light pencil lines so you can erase them and make adjustments. And then over on the other side, you can barely see the little edge of the other ear. Okay. And then color those in. that black outline that we add to everything at the end. And it's optional, right? Not everyone's necessarily gonna to wanna to color theirs, outline their paintings. It just depends on what you're looking for, what effect you're looking for at the end. But it is all gonna be going to be outlined in black. For those of, you, those of you that do do that, your painting, your characters, it's Charlie Brown will stand out, will really pop from the background. Okay, all right guys, you guys got about a minute and we're moving on to that next step. Nick Toon, sorry buddy, but you are banned from the page. Baba Hassan, you're out of here. Banned from page, yes sir, and delete. Hi Heidi, how's it going? Maggie Chapman, come on. <laughs> Gotta keep going. Somebody is asking about a little My Little Pony Christmas art. I don't know that we're gonna have a chance to squeeze one in. Maybe after, 
after the um, after Christmas, maybe the day after Christmas, we'd be able to squeeze one in. All right, folks, just wanted to remind you also while you're working on your on your skin tone there, we have, for those of you that might have missed this last week, I taught you guys how to draw this one right here. This one was a lot of fun. The Grinch and Cindy Lou ornament painting. Okay, the event's up, the video's up. Um, you can email me for the stencil also on the event page. The stencils, I listed these on the event page under the discussion board. Right, so if you guys are interested, you can go check that out. That was a lot of fun to do. And then for those of you that are interested and are able to and would like to help support the page, it is greatly appreciated. I do have a virtual tip jar. I have a Venmo, I've got a PayPal and a Zelle. For those of you that have donated in the past, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, it's fantastic uh, for all of you to join and hang out and everything else, and I really appreciate it. But one of the ways you can help support is by using my virtual tip jar, Venmo, PayPal, Zelle. This information is in, listed in the description of the video. If you went to the description, you'll see all this information there. But if you do happen to donate to PayPal or Venmo, you will see my picture on my account. You'll see my face holding a, um, holding a canvas or a paintbrush. I can't quite remember, but you'll see me on there. Zelle is just my phone number. And then Venmo, on Venmo, they often do uh, ask you to verify the last four digits of my phone number and that's it. Okay, again, this information's in the description of the video for those of you that are able to. Then also, the week before, I think it was last week also, don't remember if it was the day before the Grinch or the day after the Grinch, you get your, to paint uh, the holly tree. This video is also available. There's no stencil for this one. We do everything by hand, painted it all by hand, but you can use a cup or a glass or whatever you've got that's round for the ornament if you don't want to draw it by hand. Okay, but that is also available. A lot of fun Christmas paintings, a lot of fun Christmas things, okay? But anyway, Maria T. Lazo, that's how you would donate. Okay, thank you so much for asking. All right, guys, so here we go. What are we gonna do next? Glad you guys asked. We're gonna add some green right here. Top of the hat, just take some green, whatever green you've got. I've got a really nice little uh, green called Spring Green from Apple Barrel. I picked this stuff up at Michael's. I'm uh, not Michael's, Hobby Lobby. Michael's might carry it. I don't, I've never seen it there though. But they might. It's gonna take one of my little brushes. Again, yeah, it doesn't really matter which. Take the one that I just used for the shoes. Clean it up a little. Just gonna dip it right into my, since I'm not mixing it or anything like that, I dip it right into my my paint, and here we go. Ooh, Frozen. Frozen is coming up. Maybe not for Christmas. I did do an Olaf a couple of weeks ago. I'll show you if I've got it in here in my studio. I'll, I'll look for it here in a moment. <clears throat> but we do have an Olaf video that is available you can go watch it again under the live tab quite a few awesome videos on there for all ages some that are more complex like this one there's a lot of kid centric ones in there as well so again under that live tab on the main painting with jesse page you can go check that out okay there's that green again we're layering everything but right now Everything's going to be transparent on that first pass. So get your green down. We're going to do another layer of green over, or sorry, layer of blue on that background in just a little bit. have a little candy cane house or a gingerbread house we did a couple of weeks ago or last week sometime a few days ago not that long ago that's also up there okay but like I said there's an Olaf video up there oh and here's Olaf whoops just lost one of my lights let me fix that here's Olaf so I teach you how to draw and paint all that there is a 
there is a stencil if you'd like to use it. Email me directly or go to the event page and you'll find it in the comment section. Okay, but that's up. Okay? All right. So here we go. Another layer of blue on that background. Just gonna pour out more blue. Then I asked last few days ago, I asked everyone I was painting along with me, what do you guys think about doing a New Year's painting? New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, I'm not sure. And what should we paint? Let me know in the comments section. What do you guys think? So I'm going to outline everything first. I know a lot of us are staying home, right? We're not going anywhere. A whole lot of us are anyway. Because of the whole COVID thing, but for those of you who know that would like to do a painting, let me know. Should we? And again, if, if so, what do we paint? So I'm now on the second layer of blue across the background is gonna make everything a lot, a lot more even. Now I can switch over to my big brush and I might do that here in just a second. But first I wanna get these little edges around Charlie's body and head and hat and stuff. Again, long brush strokes. Took out my big brush from the water cup, squeezed out the extra water. Here we go. Big brush, I use it to cover big areas of the background. Makes my job a lot easier. I'm able to spread the paint nice and easily, nice and quickly. Add the stars in the background and snowfall if you want to have snowfall in yours. Everything's going to look like a really nice night sky. All right, take a moment on that. Like I said, um, we're also gonna do the pants, so might as well switch, let me switch over to my smaller brush. So what I'll typically do whenever we're painting colors that are similar, even though they're in different spots, places of the canvas, I like to do them all at the same time. Just a little bit more of an efficient way of painting. So here's my second layer over the pants. Now if I wanted to, I could make my pants darker to look more like that by using a darker paint or even mixing a little bit of a darker color in with my blue. But for this, I'm happy with this color, so that's what I'm going to use. And I think this will be the last layer I do on the pants, but we'll see. We'll see what it looks like once this is dry. There we go. All right. Joanne, I'm not sure. Uh, 
Joanne says, how can I get these messages off? Hard to see what you're doing. I think up at the top, you should be able to click on the little dots and it'll give you options like turn off messaging or turn off uh, comments, something like that, okay? So again, you might want to look up towards the top and click on the little dots and it should be able to allow you to customize that. Kimberly Ann says, can you do a New York, New York City Times Square ball drop painting from, oh, that's from Cody. Hi, Cody. Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe we could do that. That's kind of a cool idea. I like that. Glitter fireworks would be so cute. Yeah, that would be pretty cool too. I like that. Fireworks 2021. I was thinking of incorporating a, a face mask some, uh, in there somewhere. But yeah, fireworks sounds pretty cool. The Great Conjunction Star of Bethlehem that happened last night. Ooh, Leilani. Not a bad idea. That's also pretty cool. New York Skyline one. Skyline with ball dropping, says Michelle Robinson. Mmm. The Empire State Building with the apple, says Hyun. Nice ideas, guys. Lots of uh, New Year's to the ball dropping. Let's see. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Looking like we got fireworks and uh, the ball drop. Those are all getting lots of... Uh, Lots of thumbs up, lots of votes. But okay, everyone, so here we go. I'm actually gonna fix my hat a little bit. I'm gonna bring it down a little. I can see I've got my pencil line across there. I just realized that I missed a little spot in between the pink part of the head. Or I, I can come in there with pink or I can come in there with green and lower that. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna lower that a little bit. And I've got a pencil line that's really, I think when it painted that I missed it, I didn't see that. but. Easily fixed. Just gonna take my little brushes. So it'll only take a moment. Just dipping a little paint in here. And All right, there we go. While I'm at it, this green's already dry, so I might as well do another layer over it. If yours is also dry, go ahead and drop another layer of green in there. If not, don't worry about it. This is easily added as a later step. Okay. So what's next, Jesse? Good thing you're asking, folks. What we're going to do now is we're going to come in here and... While the background's drawing, we're gonna start drawing in our little Christmas tree. We're not gonna do any features on the, on the face just yet. We're gonna do one more layer of pink in here before we start on that. We also have another layer of red in here, but we're gonna, before we do any of that, we're gonna start on our, on our little Christmas tree, our Charlie Brown Christmas, Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Okay, so I want everybody to kind of notice and everybody's painting's gonna look a little different, right? Don't freak out too much, but you're gonna gauge your, Christmas, your little trees over here to the right of Charlie a little bit, okay? A little Christmas star up on top if you're gonna make room for that. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna do it with my pencil. I'm gonna start with my pencil, right up in here somewhere. Remember, you're also gonna have your uh, Snoopy, Snoopy's doghouse above it, so somewhere over here to the right of it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw this middle part, the main part of the tree. I wanna leave enough space between the tree and Charlie to be able to include the branches and stuff. So right about right here. It's gonna come down, curve it, and it's gonna stop down here somewhere. His shoes are here. You don't, you probably don't wanna go all the way down that far. But this is approximately the top. Keep in mind, again, there's gonna be a star in here somewhere, so just kind of visualize that. Let me lower my music just a little bit. Keep your pencil line nice and light. Once you've got the general shape of your tree, you can go ahead and you can go in either direction, go that way or this way, but you're gonna add a little curved line that goes across. That's the bottom of your tree, right? And it can be a little more curved than that. But once you've done that, you're gonna come up the other direction. The tree gets narrower as we go up. And it's actually a really skinny bare tree, right? And here at the top, it gets especially skinny. Again, keep your pencil lines light. A 
Once you've got that, you can add a few little branches. Nothing crazy with your branches, real skinny, skinny, skinny. We're not adding any of the needles or anything like that, just a few little skinny, skinny, skinny little pointy things. They're broader at the base, right? And they get skinnier as it goes outwards. And they all end up in a little point. Someone appears another one. This is the one that's gonna have the ornament for me, so the main ornament, the main red one. Then right up here. Little skinny one right there. Don't need any pine needles, like I said. Those will be added in later. Okay, real basic. Work on that just a little bit. All right, looking over at the comments. Hi, Angela James, fantastic. Absolutely, don't forget to send me pictures of your painting. Missy McFarland says, two champagne glasses tapping each other with sparkling 2021 above it with maybe confetti around the painting. Ooh, I like that. I like that. That's a pretty cool idea. Payal says, can you do Captain Underpants? Yes, Payal, we'll do a Captain Underpants. That's, I like that. It's a cool, cool idea. Penny Colt, with 2021 going across, hoping it'd be a better and positive, uh, better and positive, more positive year. Diana, how's it going? Tina, how are you? Hi, Elaine. Yeah, I like that. That's a good idea. You got it, Victoria. My pleasure. Thank you all for being here. All right, guys. So take a little time with your tree. We're going we're gonna to do the base here in just a moment. Make the base, the two little boards across, right? They maintain, uh, keep the tree from tipping over. We're already an hour, a little over an hour in, so we have to gauge where we are. But... Uh, you guys got about 30 seconds. Tessa says, can you do a snowman one that says 2021? We, can do, we did a little snowman. Oh, did you guys see the snowman that I did? We did a couple of weeks ago. I think I already pointed it out at the beginning of the video, but here's our little snowman. It's completely from scratch. This video is also available in the comments set in the... Uh, under the live tab. If you guys are staying in for Christmas, maybe something fun for you guys to do is go back to some of these videos and do some of these if you've missed them, okay? But definitely, a lot of fun stuff you can do. All right, guys, here we go. Let's make those boards. So all we've got is two boards crossing each other. We're gonna do the one that's on top first. The one on top is this one here. And all it is is a rectangle. So we can start right in here. Well, let me darken that up just a touch. Comes across. We're just making a basically a rectangle. Oops, and I made that too high. Let me bring this down just a little bit. That's why we make light pencil marks. So right closer to the bottom. We'll start on this side. And then over here comes out on the other side. Rectangle. Something like that. Okay? Then on the other side, board comes out like this. Another rectangle, it's just in a different direction. Comes over. There we go. Okay. Once we've done this, we're gonna go ahead and color everything in. Now, the board on the bottom, boards on the bottom are a little darker brown for me. And then the center, the inside of the tree is a light brown. So you can make a light brown by adding white to it, or you can add yellow to it, etc. etc. Right? If you want to, if you got if you want to lighten it up a little bit. I'm taking my little quarter-inch brush, 
don't worry folks I know you, some of you are probably still working on your drawing I'm gonna give you a little time to catch up I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this in just want to remind everyone do your best to keep up if you start to fall too far behind the main the most important thing is your base getting your base layers down your first layers of paint on everything once you've got that you can for the most part you can jump around like if you're really far behind but you've got all your layers down you can go to wherever I'm painting and work on that you can always go back and add the details with the other layers and such later so on these boards right here what makes them stand out is the outlining and this will, this will also require a second layer of paint so no need to sit there making everything really dark or trying to get everything super dark on the first pass. Once you've done that, lighten up your paint. If you're using the same um, same brown, I'm gonna I'm gonna add maybe a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white to mine. So we'll see what the yellow does here. And maybe a touch of white. There we go. I just want to contrast. Nice contrast between uh, the wood that's on the bottom and the, one that, and the wood for the tree. Just remember, thicker at the base, get skinnier as it goes up. switch over to a smaller brush my little liner brush I'm gonna use this little guy right here now mine it's supposed to be straight but I stored it for a couple of days with the weight of the brush on the bristles like this so it bent it but that's okay I can still use it so moral of the story don't store your brushes with facing down with the weight the weight of the handles on top. You can hang them upside down if you clip them on something where they're just floating like that, right? But don't put them where you've got them sitting on something where all the weight's on the bristles. Moral of the story. All right, here we go. Just painting my little branches now. Probably the trickiest part of all of this for some of you is going to be when we outline. The outlining part is what makes everything stand out, but making those little skinny lines and staying within the within those lines is what can be a little hard for some some people. So just mixing more of my paint. A little bit of brown, a little bit of yellow, a little bit, a little bit of white. I add a little bit of water to my mixture also, a little bit. It helps the paint flow more easily like this. I'm barely touching the canvas with my brush and that paint spreads real easily. If you've got thicker paint and you're finding that it's difficult for that paint to spread, simply add a little bit of water to your mixture, to your paint, and then you'll, you'll be good to go. It'll start to flow like this. Also, I to stabilize my hand, whenever I'm doing little skinny lines, little tiny things, I'll take my pinky, put it up on my canvas. Another technique is I'll take my non-painting hand, I'll put it on the on the table, on the canvas, and then put my painting hand right over. That stabilizes my hand. Skinnier on top, narrower, or wider at the base. Skinny on top, wide at the base. All 
All right. Okay, work on that for just a touch, for a little bit, and then in a moment we're gonna add another layer of pink to the face, more red on the hat. Maybe another layer of blue down here, we'll see. Definitely another layer of brown on the shoes. And actually, you can do. we'll do the shoes first, because most of you have some brown that you just used for your base on your tree. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, OK? But you guys got a little time there to catch up. Again, just coming over and adding a second layer over my shoes makes everything a lot more even. But it's the actual outlining that makes everything stand out. Okay, so just be aware. All right, hi Elaine, how's it going? Looking over the comments. Uh, let's see. Tammy Kinsey says my white is still too wet to paint over it. It's just mixing with the brown. Okay, Tammy, then then leave it alone for a bit. Or if you've got your blow dryer, go ahead and take it. If you've got one, take a minute or so to dry everything out. Then you can go ahead and do that. But yeah, if you're having if your white is still wet then leave this for later, okay? Don't worry about this for now. Um, yeah, and that, thank you guys, thank you for that question. Excellent question, okay? Uh, excellent comment. So any of you, if you have any questions, please ask them. There is, there's a whole bunch of you that are painting, that are painting along, and a lot of you might have the same question. So please, if you have a question, don't be shy, ask it. I am not, I, I you know, I'm not going to, uh, uh, I'm not, not going to answer. I am going to answer you. In other words, I, I do want to make sure that everybody understands what we're doing sometimes as uh, people have, as people have been painting for a while, we sometimes forget you know some of the little steps or to mention this or that. But yeah, anytime you have a question, please ask it and I'll be more than happy to answer you. Okay. Donna Kennedy Phillips says maybe 2020, but the zero is a toilet paper roll. That's a good one. I like that. I like that, that's pretty awesome. Bonnie Palmer, absolutely, do this on your day off. Merry Christmas to you. But yeah, don't be shy, folks. Leave your questions in the comments, especially if you're newer to painting, it's expected you can have questions. We have lots of new people today. I don't know how many first timers painting, but I have to assume that a lot of you have very little experience or no experience in some cases, and so all the questions are valid, okay? Thank you, Paula. What's happening, Amira? Welcome back. Welcome, welcome back. Mary Cox says, I have no red. What can I do? What colors do you have, Mary? Do you have anything close to red? Do you have orange? Um, you can always substitute. I mean, his jacket could be a different color. It could be brown, okay? His hat could be brown. His hat could be blue. Uh, Snoopy's house could be brown. Okay, so if you don't have red, that's what you, you know, you can, you're going to have to substitute. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with that. Originally, I was actually going to make his jacket brown. Um, his hat could have been a different color. Could have been a baseball cap, could have been whatever, right? But yeah, originally I was going to do that brown. And so the house would also look fine as a brown color. Okay, so yeah, if you don't have the colors that we're using, then find something that will, that will work. Okay, here we go. We're gonna take some red now. We're gonna take a little bit of red. I'm gonna take my brush here that I was just using for the shoes. I'm gonna clean this up a little. Again, I'm using my water cup, swirling around my brush in there, taking my red and right over the top. Now everything's gonna get a lot more intense, more even. I don't think I'm gonna need a third coat. But we'll see once this is dry. Depending on the type of red paint that you're using, the pigmentation within it, um, every brand is a little different. Some reds are brighter, more intense, thicker, but almost every type of acrylic paint requires layering. And almost always red is one of the more, one of the colors that's most transparent. So on this pass, everything gets a lot more even, a lot brighter. Okay, put your layer down again, following that same direction with your brush strokes. When we add, once we add the details in black, the outline of stuff, it, everything's gonna look a lot more like a jacket. 
then move up to your hat, do the same thing, second little layer of red up in here. And by now, my background is dry, or mostly dry blue, which is gonna allow me to come in here and draw Snoopy's house and Snoopy's house. But before we do that, another layer of pink in here. Also, if you need another layer of green on your hat and it's dry enough, go ahead and put it in. So it looks like I am going to do a third layer of blue to the pants. And that will be all. Oops, picked up a little red there with my brush. Actually, I didn't clean it up well enough, which sometimes happens. So cleaning that up a little bit. No big deal. All right, I'm gonna take some blue. and right over my pants. Or rather, Charlie Brown's pants. Just like that, nothing to it. So take a couple minutes on that. I'm going to make a mixture of my pink so on the second layer of the pink that I'm applying to the face, it doesn't really matter too much. If you don't have enough of the original pink that you made, just create another batch. It doesn't have to be exact. As long as it's all an even colored coat, we're gonna be, we're gonna be good to go. So remember what, what colors did we mix for that face? A little bit of red, a little touch of red, tiny bit of red, a touch of white, and a touch of yellow. So let's start with those colors. Let me, oops. Let's drop my pink. So a little bit of a little bit of white right on the plate. Grab a bunch of the pink, bring it over a little bit. Remember to introduce a little bit of red at a time. The red can very quickly overpower and make it really, really bright red. So just a little at a time. Now that you've got the original uh, a coat of pink on the face. As you begin to mix your paint, you could do this. You could grab your brush and go like this. Okay, pretty close. I'm gonna take a little touch of the yellow to tone it down. Again, brown, a little, little touch of brown would also work. Mix enough where I can go right over the top of everything so I don't have to stop part way and mix some more. Rounded brush strokes, especially towards the bottom of the face. The rounded brush strokes give the face dimension, gives it a roundness. Okay, a little bit, doesn't have to be a perfect curved line, but just give me some curved brush strokes down here. And then as you get towards the top, then you begin to brush across, especially towards the forehead brush across again even though it's all the same color your direction that you the direction that you paint in will create a little bit of dimension depth you'll give objects the illusion of dimension okay all right and we can't forget the neck This kind of sounds like Peanuts music in the background. Beethoven playing his uh, piano with the jazz band or something. Okay, cool. So the next thing that we're gonna do to the face, the next thing that we're gonna do to Charlie is we're gonna start adding the details in black in just a little bit. So work on that layer of paint. My background over here is all nice and dry so I can actually draw the house and I can draw Snoopy. For that part of it, I'm actually going to use a piece of chalk so that you can see it against the back, the background, so that you can see it on the video. I could, if I was doing this for myself, 
and there goes my uh, and there goes my um, phone vibrating in the background. Apologize about that. So, if I was doing this for myself, I could come in here with pencil and I'd still be able to see my pencil lines against the blue background. Right, the lead will reflect different, or the graphite will will reflect in a different way, so I can see my pencil lines. But you won't. If I do it now, like in pencil, you won't be able to see it on video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do mine in chalk. Chalk is a nice way to draw stuff on canvas because you can easily erase it. But against dark backgrounds, you need lighter colors to make it easier on yourself. Okay, so if you got some chalk, you can use chalk. Otherwise, you're just going to use a pencil for yours. But here we go. Let me grab my chalk. We are at 435. That means we've been painting for approximately an hour and 35 minutes. Like I said, time flies when you're having fun. So, and all I'm using is basic chalk. I actually borrowed some chalk from the neighbor because I couldn't find my, I couldn't find my, my sticks of chalk. I bought some a few weeks ago and I couldn't find them, so I had to steal some from the neighbor. Actually, the neighbor let me borrow some. A big one of those kid sidewalk chalk little balls and I broke it up into little pieces so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with Charlie Brown's house pretty basic not Charlie Brown Snoopy's house pretty basic rectangle at the base and then a nice little it's almost a like a trapezoid on top right um, but we're gonna start with that rectangle on, on the base so look at the beauty of chalk watch I'll show you here in a second so I've got my little pencil lines like this I mean, chalk lines, I can easily come in here with a paper towel and that wipes right off. Okay, that's the nice thing about working with chalk. Makes it really easy to erase. I prefer it to pencil when I can, when I can, uh, when I can use it. So here we go. One side of Charlie Brown's, Charlie Brown Snoopy's doghouse. You just come up, just come up a little bit. This is probably about two and a half inches. We do the same thing on each side to the other side, okay? same height and then we come across okay come out a little bit on each side and then we're gonna come up at an angle okay like that maybe too steep so I clean that up Correct a little. Let me take a step back for behind the camera so I can, okay, good. Get a better angle as to what I'm doing. There we go. For those of you that have your stencil, as soon as we've got the house in place, you're gonna grab your little stencil, put your Snoopy up on top, and go ahead and trace that out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you, for those of you that are drawing Snoopy with me, I'm gonna teach you to draw that freehand, okay? Let's see, Laura Sullivan, how did you do the bottom? I was late to the start, so been doing it out of order. Sorry, Laura, which, which part of the bottom? Uh, as in down here, I'm not sure. Could you, could you clarify a little bit? Be like Chuck. Let's see. Relax and have fun with it. Painting is so healing. Don't overthink it or try and perfect it. Be like Chuck. Exactly, Rhea. Fantastic message. That is exactly right. I haven't mentioned it too much today. I normally like to tell everyone to relax and have fun with it. Don't worry about trying to recreate this thing exactly like what I've got. Have fun with it. Yours is gonna look a little different. There's nothing wrong with it, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. If along the way you all of a sudden go, oh my gosh, I missed this or I missed that or this is too big or that's too small, as long as it's kind of like this, you're gonna be fine. Snoopy's house could be a lot larger. Snoopy could be larger, could be smaller also. <clears throat> the tree could be larger, could be smaller. Charlie, Charlie could be a different size. Everything on here could be different, okay? Don't worry too much. Uh, Laura, I'm sorry, but the background? Holly Breeden, yes, the video will be available afterwards. As soon as the live's over, I save it to the live tab on the main painting with Jesse page, okay? So Laura, um, give me one second. I'll, I'll see if I can answer your question, okay? We'll talk about the background in a second. So here we go. Snoopy, let's draw us some Snoopy. We're gonna start with his head, okay? But what I want you guys to kind of, for those of you that are drawing this from scratch, anticipate 
that you have to fit all of Snoopy's body right across there. So if you make this part of his head too large, you're gonna have to force, you're gonna have to shorten the body, and it's not gonna look like Snoopy. So what you want to do first is this kind of gauge. Top of his head is gonna be about right here. Okay, his feet are probably gonna be about right here. You're just kind of putting little markers down. So his feet will be end here, and then the edge of his head is gonna be right there. So. So his head will probably be about this wide for, from the neck to the top of his head. It's about a third, okay, about a third. So mark that off. Again, you're just kind of gauging a little bit. This can be adjusted as we go. His belly is a little bit larger than the rest of the body. So the, so the belly will probably end there. And then we might have to make a little adjustment here and bring the feet out just a little bit more. But those are the areas that you want to block off. The edge of his head, about where his little collar is, the bottom where his belly comes in to, his, to meet his legs, and then the area for the legs and the feet. <clears throat> but, but let's start with that head. So the head's nice and curved, nice little curve. Okay, and from there it goes up to his little snout. Curves over. So, little curved head. The line goes in a bit, goes up and curves over, and then comes down to the neck. Okay. And that fits about nicely where that collar is. From there, we got his little belly that protrudes up. Doesn't go up super high, doesn't, he's not, doesn't have a huge belly. Okay, come like that. And then adjust if you need to. Maria, absolutely. My pleasure, absolutely. I'm gonna bring the camera forward just a touch. Give you guys a closer look at what's happening with Snoopy in his house. Okay. Okay, let me then also let me go ahead and darken this up a bit so it's easier to see everything on camera. Okay, so once we got we get to his belly, we're gonna come across, straight line across. And then we gotta make his little feet. We only see one foot. And it's a little higher up than the belly. It goes a little higher than the belly, but not quite as high as his snout. Okay. That's why I like working with chalk. I can use my finger to correct, erase. And there's his little feet. And then let's not forget his little nose. We don't have to worry about the eyes or any of those details. The collar, his little hand, you do want to kind of put in a little hand down here, a little, just this part of his little hand that comes down. It's really subtle over the edge of the top of the house. Let me give you guys a close up. And there's the general idea for Snoopy. We don't need to worry about the, the ears or the little details on the inside, okay? So work on that for about a minute or two. Let me look up, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Not sure why my table's a little extra slippery today, I think. I don't know, maybe it's the, I know it's the easel that I'm using my easel. I'm using a slightly different easel today and I think it just has the little um, the little feet are a little a little slipper a little uh, more slippery. These two easels are actually two different types. This one doesn't have that type of a foot. So maybe I'll switch that out in a bit. We'll see. Maybe work on your Snoopy for a little. phone vibrating for those of you that are just kind of watching for now if you don't know yet obviously we did everything from scratch uh, if you're just tuning in maybe you don't know that but there are stencils available for this I've got a Charlie a stencil for Charlie Brown and a, then I have a stencil for Snoopy's body if you go to the event 
to the event page and you go into the discussion tab, you'll see those stencils posted there. You can simply save them from your phone and print them out, cut them out, and then, and then follow along with the uh, recorded version of this, which will be available right after the live session is done. Or you can email me directly at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com and I will send you the PDF file for that. But all right, guys, let's move on. What are we doing next? Well, we're going to go ahead and color in Snoopy's house. Taking one of my smaller brushes, just loading it up with paint. I'm going to do the edges. This is going to be really transparent, so we're going to require at least two layers, or more than likely three, especially against that dark background. It's going to look like a really dark red, which is okay, no big deal. I'll try to I'll try to stop the phone from vibrating whenever that starts to happen, but. Once again, I do apologize. I did not put my phone on Do Not Disturb. I got a really cool phone that has a really, really good camera. Um, so I like to use my phone to record. I also have a nice, I have a nice camera that I actually bought for recording. Really nice Canon that I planned on using. I'll use that one a lot for my pre-recorded videos. Um, really, really nice quality, but my phone just makes it really easy to use. Use that instead of the camera. When I start doing multiple feeds at the same time, I might require two cameras, so I'll, I'll, that's when I'm gonna be using my nice, nice camera. Anyway, so here when you paint across, when you start to paint the inside of the house, paint with nice long horizontal brush strokes. So start from one edge, work your way to the other. It makes it look like you've got boards, right? Boards across. And then do the same thing with the roof. Nice long brush strokes. And again, don't sit there stressing about the transparent nature of the paint if you're working with acrylic paint. We're going to do a little second layer later. Watch your little hand right here when you're painting across right here. You don't want the paint over Snoopy's little hand or his paw, not his hand, his paw. All right. There we go. As soon as you're done with that, you're gonna take some white, you're gonna put a layer of white on Snoopy's body. Again, take one of your small brushes. Clean up whichever one you were just using if you have to. Just using my water brush and water cup to clean that Kind of swirl my brush around, swirl it in really well. Don't want any paint in it, any white paint other than white on my brush, otherwise it will mix into my white paint and change the hue a bit. So you can do this as well. Now I'm just gonna take some white. Not worried about the details on the inside of Snoopy right now, so just gonna go in there and paint everything. As you can see, the white is also transparent, so it's taking a little bit of that light blue from the background. It's okay. For your edges, you might want to switch to a really small liner brush or round brush, a little small one to clean those up a bit. So like this one here for me, right? Take my little brush and work my way around. And I know folks, there's a lot of steps involved, especially for those of you that are new, maybe it's your first time painting, painting with me, or you're just newer in general to, general to painting. There are a lot of steps involved. It's just um, the nature of art, right? I mean, if it's a real basic painting, then steps are a lot more limited. But typically painting, especially with acrylic paint, requires steps, there are steps involved. You know, you do one layer, it dries, you're working on other layers in the meantime, then you come back to that first layer, add another layer over the top, 
And all of that is what starts to create a really nice piece. But there really is no shortcutting it. I mean, you can take little shortcuts like using a blow dryer to help dry your piece. But generally speaking, you're gonna require lots of little steps. All right, so work on that for a moment. I'm going to grab another easel here to switch this one out with because I'm gonna end up having a little accident over here. Okay, give me one sec. happening Jeffrey <laughs> mr. Jeffrey Dar mother from another uh, brother from another mother what's up Jeff love tunes need a dope artwork sorry buddy ban from page delete from page all right hmm, I made the forehead a little too large guess I will erase and try it again no worries, Penny. You already know how this works. You're all, you're good. Lanetta, what's happening? Lonnie from Katy, Texas. I'm so bummed. Boo, I, I'm, at, I'm watching but getting home late, so I will have to catch the replay. No worries, Lanetta. You know how it works. Make sure you send me a copy of your painting, okay? Can't wait to see what you come up with. You're an awesome painter, so love your stuff. Uh, let's see. Somebody says, can you do all I want for Christmas is you. my music what's happening to my music over here so where's my music oh there we go I think I lowered it by accident I can't play any copyrighted music otherwise Facebook will ban or not ban but block my video hi Elsa sounds, sounds good Susan definitely catch it later Thank you, Penny. Nicole and Tessa from C Cologne, Michigan. I think that's what the city is. Awesome. Welcome, Nicole. Welcome, Tessa. Dion. Dion. Gordine says, Mom, 19-year-old son from Florida. De-stressing. Awesome, Dion. Welcome. Welcome to you and your son. Fantastic, thank you for being here. All right, everyone, so here we go. Little, We have our first layer of paint on Snoopy's house and on Snoopy himself. Now we're gonna come over and we're gonna start adding detail to, to Charlie, we're getting there. Okay, we're gonna start picking things up a little bit so we don't paint too far past, actually, so we don't paint, paint past three hours. But I'm going over to my liner brush, okay? Now, there's a trick to making little skinny lines with your brushes. One, of course, is using a small skinny brush. However, what you want to do is you want to take a little bit of your black paint and you're gonna mix a little bit of water with it. So take some black, bring it over. Um, you're gonna take your brush, okay? I'm gonna grab a little bit of this paint. I just move it over to the side. A little bit, move it over to the side. Now I'm going to take my brush and I dip it into my water cup, okay, and I bring some water over with it. I'll do this a couple of times, two, three times, bring, dip my water, my brush into the water cup, bring that brush over, and then I let that water mix into my paint. You don't want drippy paint, so you don't want it too super runny, you just want there to be enough water in there to create a really nice, easy flow to your paint. And the way you can test for this is this, once you've mixed your water in there, take your brush and go like this on a plate or paper or whatever, as long as it goes on very easily, just as easily as this or close to as easily as this, that's what you want. Okay, it's just gonna make your drawing, your outlining so much easier. So here we go. What I want you guys to do first is this, you're gonna outline the very bottom of Snoopy's hat. 
and you can kind of do a little wiggly line across just right along the edge of your green real subtle okay you guys see the little curl up here above Charlie Brown's or right on his forehead okay we're gonna do that after we do the eyes and the nose okay we're not gonna do that just yet so I don't want you guys to make that so big that you bring that too far down and don't put the eyes in the right spot okay now you can do this with pencil if you'd like it's a little safer but I'm gonna go ahead and pop in I'm actually gonna do the nose first and the nose is if you were to take half the middle of Charlie's head that's about right here the nose starts right about right about at the middle mark so like right, like right about here's my middle and I'm talking about from side to side kind of close to the top the line comes out comes down and then back okay if you end up making too big of a knot of a nose like I just did it's really easy as long as your paint behind it isn't wet you can take a little bit of a paper a little bit of a little bit of water on, on a rag paper towel and then just lightly tap over it okay I'm gonna take a little bit more water here just a little bit because my black paint is really wet this is really easy to do you want to be careful though you don't want to take off any of the pink paint beneath it right you want to remove that so just lightly if you have to erase at any point that's how you would do that lightly tap too hard and it'll remove that pink paint from underneath so you don't want to do that so there we go I just corrected it okay there we go made it a little smaller once you've got the nose in place you got the two little eyes which is little beady eyes right one to the right again for those of you that want to do this with pencil because it's a little safer feel free to do so okay there's one little eye and then we come over to the other side same thing there we go Okay, once you've got his little eyes in place, now you can do the little curls above. So just a couple little lines that come down, little curved lines that go over like that. You can overlap a little bit. Okay, there we go. Nice and easy. So we got his big old smile that goes across he's a happy guy he's got his little Charlie Brown Christmas tree there next to him decorated and he likes it so what I'm going to do with his smile you put a little mark on the edges a little tiny touch that little mark right there indicates the little little edge of his mouth over on this side it's really close to the ear and it's a little bit bigger because of perspective this is a little closer to us so and his face is turned right his face is turned like this a little bit so this is a little bit bigger than this <clears throat> once you've got that I'm just gonna draw a little curvy subtly curvy line but it tends it turns up into a little smile I kind of like this smile a little bit better than that one a little happy accent okay but as long as you got a little bit of a curve you're good I'm going to stick with this. I could erase it to make it a little bit more pronounced, but I like that. It's a little crooked like his tree is, like his little tree is. Okay, so work on those details for about a minute or two. Okay, and what we're going to do, start doing next is we're going to outline the hat, we're going to outline uh, his face, the neck, and then start detail, adding detail down in the body. Laverne Davenport says, painting with my eight-year-old granddaughter. She is painting this for a Christmas gift. Awesome. Very nice.
Aaron says, having a great time here in Nebraska. Love from Memphis. From Memphis, Cruz, Aaron, and Justin. Love to all of you guys. Thank you for being here. Glad you're having a good time. I ha am having a, an amazing time with all of you. Okay, and then again, as you guys are sitting there working on that, I uh, wanted to remind you guys of something we did a couple of days ago. Some of you may not be aware. I know a lot of you that are painting today painted this with me on Sunday. Check that out. Skellington Christmas. We got Zero pulling Santa's sleigh up here. Sally and Jack, and of course, we did all this from scratch. I do provide some stencils for that. Her head and part of her body, and then his head also, and then I did a stencil for that. But we draw everything on here from scratch. Video's available under the event tab, okay? So you guys, when you have a chance, go check that out if you guys want to paint this. Again, we got, I don't know how many of you guys got stuff to do on Christmas. I know a lot of people are staying home, but maybe as a family little um, get-together, you guys can do one of these pre-recorded events. Okay, but anyway, there's that under the event tab, under the live tab, okay? But all right, guys, here we go, let's continue. We're going to now go around, outline the face. Okay, we're gonna start on this little corner over here. And I'm trying to go right, right above my pencil lines, cover up my pencil lines as much as possible. If you can still see them a little bit, okay? Right down here, we're gonna go right through that the area above the neck over here is where it might get a little tricky for you over here we didn't we don't have a line in front of the ear we just went around with the ear ear on this side because of perspective because of our angle you only see a part of his ear so we paint through it or in front of it and bring that down just like that and then, of course, we can outline the ear just like that. Then we can't forget. And again, this for some of you, this is going to be the trickiest part. If you have a little Sharpie, a skinny, small, little Sharpie type of pen, you can do that, all the outlining with a Sharpie. Don't forget, though, add water to your paint, and that's going to help everything flow. Oh, and I forgot. I want to do his hat. We're going to go all the way around his hat, too. If you miss any of the outlining, don't worry. This is all something that you could add on your own, right? The outlining is pretty basic. So try to keep up, but if you start to fall behind, jump to where I am, and you can always come back and work on this later. I'm using my finger here, my little pinky, to stabilize my hand. I find a, a dry spot somewhere on the canvas. I put my finger down, and now when I brush... And I, when I um, do my outline, it helps stabilize my hand. Okay, here on top of the hat, it goes right under. That little ball on top. But water, folks, if you're having any bit of a hard time getting that paint to flow like that, you want to add your water to it, and that's going to work wonders for you. Okay, work on that for about a minute. we got to move on to that jacket here in a moment so that's where you start making the little details on the jacket and again for those of you that are a little bit cautious or worried relax through the process but maybe you prefer to use a pencil for this part and then come in with it with um a brush okay so we'll take a moment let's look at those comments we still got about 500 people or 500 devices printing painting along um so awesome, glad that you guys are all hanging out. Somebody just asked about this one here. Now this one's not the original, I have the original at home. We, we um, hung that one up. But I've got this Jingle All The Way is what I call this one. The tutorial, we did this one, I think this was the very first Christmas tutorial I did and it was like at the very end of no November. But again, this is also available for you guys to go back to. Uh, there is a stencil that I made for this. I did not teach you guys how to draw the truck. I provide a stencil for it. You'll want to email me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. And I'll send you a copy of just, it's just the, it's actually all big blob. It looks like a blob because I colored it all in black. Instead of just doing the outline, when I was first providing stencils, 
I would often go in there and color everything in black. So you just have the, a big old black blob for the truck. But if you guys are interested, that's another one that's available. Okay? But all right, let's continue on. So on the top of the jacket, you're going to do this. Give me a little outline. Kind of like that. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to make that little collar. And the little collar comes out a little bit. Okay, and it goes in into a point and then straight up or angled up to the collar. Okay. Don't worry about perfect, just give me a little collar. This one's a little more pronounced, a little pointier than this one. No big deal. Then over here on the side, you can barely see the other collar on the other edge. Don't stress too much over this part. I know there's a lot of little detail. <clears throat> Let me give you guys a close up of that. Now is when Mr. Charlie's starting to pop. His, his features are starting to show up a little bit better. Okay, right in here in the center, he's got a little zipper, a little tiny rectangle, ever so subtle. Doesn't look like much, but it's basically a little zipper on a little, little jacket. From there, we're gonna come down now with this line right here, it's a little closer. It's not down the very middle, although it probably wouldn't be bad if it was down the middle. It's slightly over to the right and it angles that way just a little bit. So over here somewhere it comes out, okay? And then slowly starts to angle downwards a bit. Okay, something like that. Okay, just like that. Well, maybe not just like that, kind of like that. Okay, on this edge over here, I'm just gonna outline this, come right through. Come under. Don't worry, folks. I know I'm covering a lot here pretty quick. Let me give you guys a couple minutes to catch up. Remember that the outlining isn't super crucial. You can do this part on your own. Once you have the hang of it, know, um, what, you know more or less what outlining takes entails, then you can always do this on your own or with the pre-recorded session. But do your best to try to keep up. Thank you, Maria. Glad you are enjoying it. Yeah, a little, little Christmas music in the back. Makes all the difference in the world. Shanna and Kathy from Edmonton, how are you? Awesome, Penny. So you gave the uh, Jingle All the Way painting to your daughter, oh, or did you give her the, the Skellington Christmas? One to your, uh, for Christmas. That's awesome. Okay, so Joanne, what's happening? Is he sending love from Nova Scotia, Canada? Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Sending love right back to you, Joanne. Shanna says, my teenage daughters and I are really enjoying this. Thanks from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. My pleasure. Shanna or Shana? Which one is correct? Shanna? If it's Shanna, tell me the first one. If it's Shana, tell me the second one. And if it's Shana, tell me the third one. <laughs> Wait, Shanna, Shanna, Shana, or Shana? Not that I'm going to remember the numbers that I assigned to each one of those, but hopefully I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Shana. But welcome to all of you. Thank you for being here. Hope you're enjoying it. But okay, guys, so we outlined... Everything but the left side, and we did not include that arm yet. This is going to be the tricky part in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the outline for that left edge. No stressing, folks. Just relax. Have fun. Don't forget, add water to your paint. Very, very important. Add water to your paint. That helps the flow. Okay. 
going to come over on this side. We're going to start at the top, right under the collar. Okay, come down a little bit. Somewhere over here, a little past way, uh, half half of the halfway down is about right here. Okay, so this part of the elbow, you start to form it by bringing your line in a little bit. And I probably went a little too low, so let me make an adjustment on that. I don't want his hand, his arm being that far down, especially in comparison to the other arm. It's gotta be a little higher. And let's try, he's got one really long arm and one really short arm, okay? So right in here, just bring that in a little like that. Curves, angles down and over and then up. From there, we're gonna go straight up. Right, that's where his arm goes into his pocket, his little jacket pocket, and it comes back. And then you just have a line that comes down like this. Little crook of his arm. Gosh, Jesse, why are we doing so much outlining? Jeez. <laughs> Let's take your time, guys. Enjoy the process. Okay. Once we've done this little arm in there, we got these little wrinkles in his jacket. And those are really basic. Somewhere up in here, that little line that goes over in each direction, slightly angled. Right in here. Line goes across, bends up a little bit, and then goes across again. And the very last thing is we want to do the outline on the other arm, on the outside. Okay, take about a minute. We've got to outline the pants and the shoes. And then we move on to outlining the tree. Actually, we're going to do another layer on the house and on Snoopy if his face is dry enough before we start doing outlining on, outlining on the trees. But we're getting there, folks. We are getting there. Kathy Campin, how's it going? Looks great. Lisa Danielli says, can you please zoom in on the details on his jacket? Of course. Here we go. A little close up. There's the jacket. Rose, you got it. My pleasure. Katarzyna, I love painting with you. She says, fantastic. Thank you for being here. All right, so here we go. Let's do the outline on the pants. Gonna go down to the bottom. I'm gonna try to hold this a little closer to the camera so you guys can all see what's happening here, but it's pretty basic as far as the outlines for the pants, outlining for the pants. Just follow along the edge, down here in between the two pant legs. Okay, we're gonna come over. Okay, I'll try to hold this up throughout the rest of the, uh, do the shoes and stuff. Again, folks, just remember, I know some of you guys are going, oh, this is getting, you know, we're painting for a while, getting a little tired, perhaps. Come on back to the recorded version when you're ready to continue. Okay, we're gonna outline the shoes now. For the shoes, pretty basic. This is where it's important, right in here. Want to separate the shoes. Okay, there's a little line back here. Right in here. Again, it's the water that's helping the paint flow really nicely.
For those shoelaces, all you need is a couple little loops. Nothing too fancy after all they are Charlie Brown shoes. Here underneath we can draw a couple little lines. He's standing in snow. Okay. As far as the outlining on Charlie Brown, we are done. Okay, so take a moment with that for those of you that are all set to go to the next step. We're basically going to draw or paint another layer of paint here on the on the on the house. If your house is already dry, if not, don't worry about it. Same thing with Snoopy. Snoopy's not dry over here for me, so uh, I am going to go ahead and do though. It's he's almost completely dry, so I am going to go ahead and. Do a layer of red on the house and a layer of white over his body. He's almost completely dry. Then we're going to come into the uh, tree, start adding some detailing around the edges, the pines. We're going to start picking things up a little bit more here. So second layer of red, again, I brush. I could use a, I originally used a smaller brush for this step. For the sake of covering the house a little bit more quickly, I'm just going to this bigger one. But again, brush in the direction of your of the boards, the wood boards. Okay, same thing up at the top. Be careful we don't paint over his little hand that's sticking out down here. realized I was covering, I was block, blocking Charlie Brown's body. So you had, some of you guys that are still working on that can see it. Sorry about that. All right. Okay. Okay, so there's that second layer of paint on Snoopy's house. Gonna switch over to a smaller brush so I can do a second layer over Snoopy himself. Okay, a little white. Now he looks a lot brighter. Oops. Overdid it right there on his foot. It's all right. Penny, great question. So Penny says, I did red, but why does it take so many coats for red over a dark color? So it's just the nature of the paint. Um, you, unfortunately, depend, it also depends on the pigments and the type of paint you're using, but 
almost everything that I've actually everything that I've ever worked with in acrylic paint. The lighter colors, especially over dark, will require um, more layer. It's just part of how it works. Um, but yeah, it's it's about you can do different things to to kind of help with that. Like for example, before we did right over Snoopy's house, we could have done we could have done a layer of white and then came in with the red. Sorry, folks, I'm still getting all kinds of alerts. Um, hence all the vibrating, but and that would help. But you would still have to layer, just like I layered over here on Snoopy's jacket on Charlie's jacket over white. You'd still have to do a little bit of layering. Um, typically with red over a dark blue, usually a third coat is just fine. You can mix a little bit of white in your red paint to brighten it up. So on the next layer, if you do a third layer, you can add a little bit of white paint to your red, making it slightly brighter, slightly more pink. And then when you go over that, over that last layer, it's going to look a lot more, um, it's going to blend in with the red background and look more reddish. Okay. So, all right, let's add some detail to our tree. Still sticking with our little liner brush, water in the paint. Again, very, very important. We are at 521. Whoa. Uh, wow. We got it. We're going to have to pick things up a little bit. We've got about 40 minutes. We are going to pick things up a little. Um, but don't stress all the stuff that I'm doing now is stuff you're going to be able to do with the recorded version. Okay, so just coming through here, if you don't end up finishing with me, okay? So don't stress about that. And again, the video will be available immediately, immediately after. Just coming through and outlining the prominent board, the one that's on top. Then I'm gonna, then I'm come, gonna come over and outline the other one. So there's one board that's on top and that's the one that you see the entire board for except for where it goes under the tree okay but here we go we're going to outline the entire tree branches and all And then don't forget, folks, please send me pictures of your masterpieces. When it's all over, you want to message them to me on Messenger under Painting with Jesse. If it's the very first time you're ever sending me a message, you're, you're going to have to say something like, you have to send me a, a, a message first, a regular message before you can attach the pictures. So you'll say something like, hi, Jesse, I'm trying to send you a picture. And then immediately afterwards, or even just hi, it doesn't really matter what you say. And then immediately after, you can send me a, a copy of that painting. Take a picture with yourself holding it, with your group, whatever the case may be. Or if you, you know, if you want to just send me a picture of your painting, that's okay also. So taking my little brush, I'm just gonna make a few little. Little pine needles. I am gonna come in with a little bit of green later and go over the top of that then I might have to refine my needles a bit but it's okay it's been a long time since I've seen since I watched this cartoon so I might have to queue it up after after sometime today or tonight and watch it but I remember as a kid always wanting to see this all the Charlie Brown all, all the uh, peanuts specials wish I could play the soundtrack or even, or even the movie in the background that'd be so cool but again same thing Facebook would probably ban me or stop the video 
Here at the bottom, we're just gonna do a few little lines towards the base, little skinny lines. Kind of do that. Maybe a, a little higher, a couple of our branches might have a line or two. Got nothing too fancy. Now that our boards are brown, I'm just gonna come over here and do a little line, a few little lines in here. Little grain lines. Just a couple of them. Let me give you guys a close-up of the tree. Okay. You got it, Rose. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Yes, I'm using black for the outlining. I apologize if I didn't mention that. I am outlining everything in black. You got it, Kathy. Merry Christmas to you as well. Thank you for being here. Awesome, Kathy Dorr. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of little details, folks. But we're gonna, we'll pick things up a little bit, like I said. Um, I'm gonna go and make the little ornaments, the little star up on top. It's the trickiest part of the whole thing. Oh, no, not the whole thing, but you're just gonna make a little star. <laughs> Practice with your, practice on a plate, on a piece of paper before you actually put it on your canvas. Put your little ornament star on top, connects to the bottom of your tree. Your little ornaments, just round little circles, round like there's, like, a, like there's another type of circle, right? A round circle. Make making little circles. Okay, there's one there. I'll give you guys a close-up in a second. Okay, a little circle here. Your tree can have as many or as few ornaments as you want. The prominent one is this red one. Over here, I'm taking my non-painting hand. I put it on my table. I lay my painting hand right over the top. And then on the top of each ornament, I just do a little tiny square. Oops, that one didn't quite work out too well, but that's all right, still, still looks all right. And then little tiny lines to connect them to the tree. Whoops, now where am I, right here, little circle a little square on top, and then a little line that connects it to the tree. Work on that for a minute or two. This red is dry for me. I'm gonna add one more layer of red over the top while you guys are working on your tree. Um, I am going to mix this with a little bit of white just to lighten it just a touch. Make it a little bit brighter. This new brighter, it's gonna be more of a pink when it contrasts with the red layer underneath it. It's gonna stand out a little bit more. Be a little, a little too pink, so just gonna bring it down a little bit by adding more red to my mixture. So again, I just took a little bit of red, a little bit of white, mixed the two together. There we go.
All right. Think I like that? That's a good hue. Since I've got some red out, I can go and grab one of my smaller brushes. I'm going to paint my ornament red, my red ornament. Okay. As far as your other ornaments, you can go ahead and paint those now as well. I'm going to add my yellow to my star. And let's see, I've got some blue for the other ornament. Got a little bit of orange for the other one. Everybody's going to have different colored ornaments, right? So whatever colors you have, you can make those work for you. With my smaller, uh, whoops, let me clean that up. My liner brush is full of uh, black paint, so let me clean that up a bit. So grab some yellow. There we go. Gonna mix a little bit of a light blue for one of my other for the other ornament down here. Again, folks, do not worry if all of a sudden you're going, he's moving really quickly. I'm getting left behind. All of these are steps that you're gonna be able to come back to. If you don't, I know this pace is suiting some of you probably just right, but then for a lot of you, it's a little too quick. So don't worry, okay, don't stress, like I said. As soon as the video is done, I press save, it goes right up to the live tab. You'll be able to go back there, forward it to wherever you want, and continue from there in case you don't get a chance to finish with me. But do your best. And then just please do not forget to send me a picture at some point, and I'm hoping I can do it tomorrow. I'm going to post a big old batch maybe i can do it tonight we'll see a batch with all the paintings of the people that are painted with me all the people everyone that painted with me today all the people that painted with me yesterday or the day before yesterday so all three events that we did this week i'm behind on the on the uh, postings for those the batch posting all the paintings but pre people really enjoy those this one uh, i think i'm gonna do either I'll do orange, what the heck? If you don't have orange, but you have yellow and red, you can mix those two together and you'll get an orange. Got a nice little bright orange here. This is uh, yellow medium is actually what this one's called. Oh, you know what? This is not, I mixed this color. I made this, made this orange. The original color in here was yellow. And I mixed some red and made a really nice orange. It's like a tangerine color. There we go. All right, take about a minute on that. We're gonna move on here in a moment. This is kind of a crucial Part when we make the little ornaments down here, the design for the ornaments under Snoopy. Okay, so you'll want to stick with me for that one. Mary Blair, sounds good, no worries. Tina is asking, go a bit slower, please. I'll do my best, Tina. Give you guys a little time to catch up here. So, what is the trick to doing fine lines, asks Jennifer Lean. Fantastic question. Again, folks, please ask me questions in the comments. I'm more than happy to help you out. Two tricks. Whenever you dip your paint, your brush into your paint, obviously the smaller the brush, the better it is usually. 
you spin your brush as you pick up the paint I typically will pull back and spin the brush at the same time what this does is it makes the point really small okay but beyond that you want to make sure you have paint some water in your paint so for outline for making detail work in black or blue or whatever it is what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of that color I'll bring it over to a different area and then I take water I take my brush dip into the water bring those drops of water over I'll mix them into the paint and I'll do that two or three times to, till I get a nice mixture of water and paint I don't want I don't want it so watery that it runs starts to run down my painting right I just want to want it so that it's really nice and flowy okay but again the trick one of the tricks is once you've got your water and your paint all mixed you spin your brush and the tip gets really small now when I don't do lines it's really really easy that paint will spread nicely on the canvas but you want to also just make sure you're you're using the very the very tip the very point of your bristles also your hand hand placement so for example I'm gonna go ahead and paint the edges around my around Snoopy's house I'm gonna bring a little I'm gonna bring it in tighter so you guys can see because we're about to do some ornaments so this is where you're going to uh, see what what I'm talking about okay so got water in my paint okay really small skinny brush I just come here I'm using my hand I place it up against the canvas your paint should flow that easily as long as you've got enough water in it that's what it'll do again the trick is though you don't want to have so much water that it you know starts to drip but you notice I'm barely touching the canvas and that's because there's so much water in my paint there's enough water in the paint to make that happen water will do half the work for you okay down here in the snow for example if I kind of but you see that again it's all about the water in the paint now if your brush and this is starting to get there the tip of the bristles are kind of splaying out a bit so it doesn't get into a doesn't make a really skinny point pretty soon it won't and then I have to switch brushes but that's a very important piece of it if your brush does not have skinny or the bristles are all kind of splayed out because it's old or it's a different type of bristle brush you're gonna have some problems but it is the water and spinning that brush in the paint that makes it flow look at that okay water is your friend okay a little bit of paint bring it over grab some water with that same brush right so there I just dripped a couple of had a couple of droplets land on my paint now I come up here and outline that house Now what I'm going to do is the house has a, you know your little lines for the boards really light they could be slightly curved they don't have to be perfectly straight but give me a few little lines across the house like that to kind of indicate that it's got these little boards across there and you'll do the same thing up here practice experience time patience you'll slowly get here okay and some of you will quickly get here right it just depends everybody's different but you will with practice with time like I said you will eventually pick up on all this stuff a lot of little tricks a lot of little techniques so we're gonna make the little curved lines for the for the little ornaments the little lights and what we're gonna do is over here by his hand we're gonna make a nice little curved line it's gonna come over like this again water is your friend make sure you got plenty of water in your mixture you may want to draw this first up to you I'm gonna do mine like I said I'm slightly over at an angle I don't want to block what I'm doing so you guys can see it I'm gonna bring my hand down here but over here 
I'm gonna make a little have a little line that curves. Okay. Same thing, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Or towards to the other side. You guys are hearing all the buzzing from my ring camera, from my Facebook notifications. <laughs> You're just getting all kinds of buzzing going on. Yeah. Those scammers are pretty dang annoying. They're distracting. And there really isn't a whole lot that Facebook can do about it because they don't know who's, you know, who's gonna attempt to scam. It's not until we report them and, you know, call call it to Facebook's attention, then they, you know, they allow us the control to ban them, but they are annoying. Okay, so we got the little string lights, right? We're gonna make almost like we're making little little chili peppers or little upside down pears. I'm just gonna make a few of these little lights. Little Christmas lights. And yours can have as many as you want. They're all gonna be slightly different colors. They're a little broader at the base, a little bit wider, or broader at the base, skinnier at the, the top. So you'll have one right here. And I just, though I made those quite a bit larger by accident, I can clean that up. Paper towel, once again, a little bit of water. I can I can fix this by removing most of it. And then. Okay, something like that. Okay, work on those for just a little bit. Going to give you guys a little time there. Let's take a look at the comments. You got it, Dan. My pres my pleasure from Vancouver, from California to Vancouver. Thank you for being here. You guys are awesome. All of you that are still hanging out with me, greatly appreciate it. Uh, Myra, I do not have the next painting. This is the last one currently on the schedule. Look, over the next couple of days, I will be posting what the next ones are. I have at least, at least one more before the end of the month, possibly two, maybe three. Okay? Um, so be on the lookout for the notifications. If you, Like I said, if you like the page, you'll get those if you follow the page or like the page, you should get the notifications every time I post something new. But I'm likely gonna be doing at least two more events before the end of the year, and I'll try to have all my uh, events for the new year, for 2021, for January, not the whole year, but for January, up pretty soon. As far as brands for a fine point brush, there are so many out there. Uh, the trick isn't so much in the brand it's basically just finding when you whenever you pick your brush set just making sure they have the small round they're called round the technical term for these brushes is round there's brights there's flats um, there's wash brushes but the round they're called round brushes they're also called liner brushes those are the ones you're looking for the smaller and they come in different sizes, right? It just depends on how thin of the line you want to make. 
but the smaller the, the brush, the typically the easier it is to make fine lines. If you have a thick brush right now and you're having a hard time, then skip over the little skinny lines and wait till you get the small brush and then you can always come in and add that later. Okay, so just want to make sure you guys, uh, you know, understand that it's not so much the brand because there's lots of brands out there, but you, you pick them up. I pick my brushes up Michaels or Hobby Lobby, it just depends. But um, this one that I'm using, this brush, this brand is the Fine Touch. They also make really good paints, but the Fine Touch, this is a zero round brush, okay? Zero round brush. Also referred to as a liner brush. Okay, it's a zero. That's how small it is. So, yeah, brush selection is really important. So, I'm not going to do another layer over Snoopy. I'm just going to go ahead and add the detail in just so you guys can see what I'm, what I'm going to do here. Um, ideally, I would go in there and add another layer of white over him to make him a little bit, um, you know, a little bit lighter, but that's okay. No worries. If you guys need a second layer, you can go ahead and add one and then just add all these details later. We got his little collar in place. Okay, here's where it gets tricky. His little paw. There's a little line that goes across like this. The top part of his hand or his, his foot. Okay, and then from there it's just going to come straight down into that little section that you guys created. That little round part that hangs over the house. Okay, and it looks like we are going to run a little over 3 o'clock. I mean, a little over three hours. Hopefully not too much. I know a lot of you guys got stuff to do. And I'm sure for some of you, painting fatigue is settling in. But we're getting there. We're, al we're almost there. We're not too far off. Won't be too much over three if we do go over three. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and outline all of Snoopy's body before I start adding any more detail on the inside. Don't forget your water and your paint. But yeah, don't worry so much about the brand. Also, these are not super expensive brushes or anything like that. There are some really good entry level uh, brush kits out there that you can get for under 20 bucks with a variety of nice brushes. As long as you take care of them, they'll last you a long time. Afterwards, whenever you're done uh, with your brushes, you clean them up using a little bit of soap. A little bit of dish soap is fine. Sometimes you don't even need, need soap, depending on how much use you gave them. Clean them up. The one thing that you want to do, two things, once you've cleaned them up, you want to reshape them. You want to do this, put them back into the normal shape or original shape, and then place them, store them so that they're either on their side like this <clears throat> or like this, but you don't want to do this where, where the weight of the brush is on its bristles. That will bend them like this one here, <laughs> okay? I always tell everybody, don't store your brushes like that. But sometimes I'm in a hurry. I've got, I'm super busy all the time, but I have a whole bunch of brushes in my studio. So when this one goes completely bad, I can just switch it up for another one. But anyway, that's how you preserve your brushes. Okay, so we got Snoopy all outlined. Let's do his little nose, little round nose up on top here. This little button nose up here, right? This little eye slit. All it is, he has little closed eyes. Nice little long line. On his little fingers, <clears throat> all you're doing is you're just going to have three little lines for his little in between his his little paw. Let me give you guys a close up of that. On his foot, two little lines. One, two.
what happened to my music? Oh, can't play this music. This music that's about to kick on was is copyrighted music. Luckily, I caught it. I get my music from YouTube, but I get it. I have to use non-copyrighted music, otherwise I'll get in trouble. I think I already mentioned that. One thing that I forgot to outline was the uh, the entire horizon line, which we can do really quickly here. All I'm going to do is take some black, take my little liner brush, and I'm going to do this. Whoops, let me skip this commercial. Right over the top here. I'm going to go back, the, I'm going to pull the camera back a bit. Right here, I'm going to come across. All of the, all of the horizon line for the snow gets an outline. Um, yeah, gets an outline. While we're at it, we're also going to add a few of these little lines in the snow. Just pick a few little spots. Nothing major. I think that'll do. Maybe one more right over here. Let me take a little step back. Couple things left. The colors and the ornaments in here, the little green around the pine needles, and then our stars. And I think other than signing it and other than painting the very bottom edge, we're pretty much done. Okay, so let's take a, about a minute to kind of assess where you, where you are, where we all are. And then we're gonna go ahead and start adding some color to the ornaments. Green, we're gonna do the ornaments all but the green ones. Once we, we're, we're gonna do the green ornaments last up in here, we're gonna do any green. Uh, and then we're gonna use that same green to outline some of the pine needles. And then we're gonna go into our stars and our snowfall and we are Pretty much good. I know I do often forget details here and there. I'll be like, oh, I didn't, I forgot to do that. So I got to make sure I look at it closely so I do not forget. Okay, so take a moment, catch up there, folks. Don't forget, for those of you that are looking for stuff to do over the next couple of days, we got our Skellington Christmas that we did a few days ago. Okay draw that and paint it all from scratch but there are stencils available if you go to the event page you'll see all the details in the comment section including the stencils are attached if not you can email me directly and i'll send that over to you we also got the grinch and cindy lou christmas theme from about a week ago same situation draw it from scratch but if you want the stencils the stencils for them check out the event on the painting with jesse page look in the comments find the, the information and uh, the, the stencils are there. Otherwise, send me an email to paintingwithjesse at gmail.com and I'll get those out to you. Jesse, J-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, just like how it's spelled on my Facebook page or here. Okay, J-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. There it is, at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com. Okay. But I do have a virtual tip jar for those of you, again, that would like to help support the page. Helps me keep doing these awesome videos and allows me to hang out with you guys. So for those of you that can, I, of course, it's just something that if you're able to, it's fantastic. But I have a virtual tip jar, I have a Venmo, PayPal, and a Zelle. Um, 
Venmo and PayPal are essentially at Painting with Jesse. Uh, Painting with Jesse, all one word here. All this information is in the description of this video. There's also a link to PayPal. You can simply click on that and it'll take you right to my account. But either if you use either one of these, there is a picture of me on the account. So make sure you verify that it's me there um, by looking at the picture. And then Zell, of course, is just my phone number. Okay? But all right, let's color in those ornaments. The little ornaments, again, I'm using a little tiny liner brush, little skinny guy, right? Same one that we've been using. I'm going to do some uh, ornaments in pink. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a little bit of pink. I got some uh, really bright pink that I sometimes use. But whatever pink you've got, find a couple little ornaments. And let's color them in. Okay, there's that. Maybe a couple of orange ones. Remember, we're doing the green ones last, so we can add the green needles. Maybe a couple of light blue ones. Hopefully you guys are all having an amazing time. Hopefully you're all enjoying this. And hopefully, especially those of you that are new, decide to come on back and paint some more. Okay, for all of you that are here, we're getting close to the end here. Just want to tell you guys that I appreciate you being here. I absolutely love it. If you guys would like to invite friends, if you know there's people out there that would enjoy the content of these art videos, Please share the page with them, invite them, let them know, hey, check this out. And then also do not forget that there is a live tab that has all the, uh, has the library, library of all the previous videos there. I do upload a lot of these to YouTube, but I'm super behind on, on that. I have a YouTube under the same page, under the same name. I don't have any, I don't do any live sessions there. I, not yet anyway. I do plan on doing some starting next year. Starting in January next year. And maybe I'll do some, like a simultaneous broadcast where I'm doing a, a live at the same time on Facebook as I do on YouTube. All right, there's my green ornament. And what did I say? We're going to do, once we do the green ornament, we can come around here with the green and work some of this green in around our... Our uh, pine needles, trees, pine pine needles, and you can you can layer over the top of some of your black lines, but you can try to work around it a little bit. Let me get you guys a close up. You can always also come back. If you cover too much of your black lines, you'll just come in here, come in and add a little bit of uh, black over them to refine them a bit. But again, just taking my little skinny brush and giving our little Christmas, little Charlie Brown Christmas tree, a little bit of personality, a little more personality. He's a cute little guy. All right. One more thing I'm forgetting, and I almost wouldn't have surprised me if I forgot it completely. Snoopy's ear. 
and of course our stars, but Snoopy's ear, very important. Take my little liner brush, somewhere up here near the top of his head, just gonna come down. It's a little bit narrower at the base, if you can get that. And it curve opens up a little tiny bit. If you painted your ornaments a little too high up, your little string lights too high up, you can always, you can always put your ornaments over Snoopy's ears. So for example, if let's say your ornaments are a little too high, you bring your Snoopy ear, your ear down and then simply paint. So let's say for example, if this is really high up, I bring my Snoopy ear under my ornament and below it, under and then below it. Okay, work on that for just a moment. It is six o'clock, woo, three hours. Look at that, marathon painting. And we still got 333 devices hanging out. You guys are awesome. My hat's off to all of you. I really appreciate you guys being here. Don't know how many people that means are painting because a lot of you guys are painting in groups. But last little step here. I'm gonna take my little liner brush. You can also do this with the back of your handle of any one of your brushes. You dip it right into the white paint and you can make little bits of snow like this. You can also do that with the tip of your brush, with the tip, with the bristles. This is a little bit faster. The bigger the handle of your brush, the bigger your little circles can will be so and then the less pressure you put you place up against the canvas this you know the the smaller the little snowfall the little circles will be so you put a few of these up and then what you're going to do is you're going to find little spots where you can make these little stars these little stars like let me see here let me back it up again. Sorry. Sorry about that. I was over there showing you guys how to do some stuff that you can't see. Actually, let me readjust so that I can have the whole picture back in shot. The whole painting. Okay. As far as the, the stars, you guys probably pretty much know, already know how to do those, and I'll give you a close-up of those here in a bit. But they're just, to create those little, these are easy stars to create. You're going to have their little five line stars, little five points to them. Got one line, whoops, picked up some red, don't want that. Let's see here. So one, two, Three. And again, I'll give you guys a close-up in a little bit. Four, for those of you that aren't familiar with these. I used to make these in school when I was a kid. And I still use it. So you can go through and make a bunch of these little guys. Throughout. All right, let me give you guys a close-up. See, see right here. Mm, let's see, over here. We're gonna go, and I hope that I can do this where I can both hold it where you guys can all see it. And so we can go one. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Two, three, four, five, and then we fill it in. OK. 
Okay. And you pick your spots wherever you feel like you want to add these little stars. One, two, three, four, five. Practice on a piece of paper or a plate or what have you. If you want to get a little practice in, once you've done all the little lines and connected them and filled them in, then you can kind of go through and refine the stars, clean them up a little bit. Okay, so add as many of those as you'd like. I'm gonna make a couple more of those just to fill in my sky a little, a little bit more. One, two, three, four, five. Fill it in. And maybe one up here. One. Two, three, four, and five. All right, so you would go through and add as many or as few as you'd like. Add your little uh, snow, little snowfall in there. I think we've pretty much got everything. So what I would say is, and I'm not leaving just yet, folks. I'm going to stick around for a little bit and maybe answer some of your questions here in just a moment. But you sign your piece. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of orange. Why not? Let's do it in orange. Let's grab my lid here. I come in here with my last name. Okay. The very last thing that I would do is I would flip it over on its head and then make a mixture similar to my snow mixture or simply use white and I would paint across the top. Even though the canvas is white, I mean, you could leave it white if you want. I like that there's a, a subtle difference between a non-painted surface and a painted surface. So I'd mix a little bit of that light blue, a little bit of black with the paint to make that really subtle shift in tone and then go through there and paint the top of that and then I'd let it sit like this for a little bit to dry. That's for those of you that are painting on a canvas, right? On an easel. But that is pretty much the end of that, folks. I am sitting in front of the computer now, saying hello to all of you guys and goodbye to all of you guys. So let me lower the music just a little tiny bit. Bridget Neeling, you are absolutely, well, where did that comment go? Sorry, I lost your comment, but I think it was Bridget, Bridget Ealan. Yep, you are absolutely welcome. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you for being here. Adam, thank you so much. Sally says, I've had so much fun. First time painting, and I'm very happy with the result. Awesome, Sally. I'd love to hear that. I'd love to hear those stories, those comments. Penny says, I'm a little behind. It's okay. It's okay, Penny. Don't worry. You know how it works. Go watch the recorded video. As soon as I put a, uh, as soon as I finish here, that's where that's gonna go, right? Right up to that live tab. Uh, but anyway, folks, I just want to thank all of you that have been painting with me these past few weeks and months, and for all of you that are new here, uh, you know, stick around. There's a lot more fun paintings to come, a lot of really cool projects. Again, I haven't decided if I'm doing anything on New Year's yet, but it's a very good likelihood either New Year's Day or New Year's Eve. We'll see what works best. I have to come up with, with a really cool little painting, and I loved your ideas that you guys shared with me earlier. I really appreciate it. Um, but stay tuned. If you haven't liked the page or followed the page, go to the main painting with Jesse page when this is all over. Click on follow. That way you get all the notifications um, whenever I post something new. Make sure you guys send me pictures of your, your masterpieces. I do want to see those, and I want to share those. Uh, don't forget all of the sessions that are available under the live tab go check those out and then for those that can don't forget my virtual tip jar i really appreciate the support with that um, the information 
to that is in the details of this video in the uh, description up at the top okay but anyway folks thank you so much for being here once again hope you guys have an awesome and amazing rest of your day uh yeah just want to uh thank you all once again and let you know that i really really appreciate it but all right guys paula you are very welcome my daughter she says my daughter had a lot of fun absolutely my pleasure christina i don't at the moment i'm not selling any of the paintings i will eventually find something to do with them whether donating them or possibly giving them to kids schools and things like that i don't i don't know yet i'm getting a lot of them that are um that it's uh, a lot of them accumulating. But let's see. Christian says, how did you make the original Snoopy's house look like it sits down it sits in, down in the snow some? Okay, really good question. So what I did with this one here is I brought the edge down a little bit so it's not quite on the surface. But let me show you. Let me show you what, I, what you can do. There's one of two ways that you could get this effect. You can continue this edge down a little bit. The red, you would just bring that down a little, or the easier thing would be to actually bring your snow level up. Let me demonstrate really quickly. Excellent question. I actually, this was accidental. I didn't really mean to not do it that way. So that is an extra, I mean, a, a really nice question and just a minor little extra step. But here's what I would do. Let's say you've got it like I do here. You would take a little bit of white paint. Excellent, excellent question because that is a cool little difference, isn't it? So all I'm going to do is this, take a little bit of paint, and just along this edge, I'm just gonna bring up the snow a little tiny bit. You don't need to do this a lot, just a little bit, so that snow comes up on the edge a touch, and I can do the same thing over here. Sure, I cover up my the little horizon line that I created earlier, and you might have to layer this a couple of times to get the snow, um, nice and bright so you would kind of do this let this dry a little and then come back with another another layer and you do it again okay once you've done this a couple of times where you've layered over in white then you're going to take your little liner brush okay once you've done that you're going to take your little liner brush and Grab some black paint, right? Before you do this step, before this, you do the, what I'm about to do, you want this to be nice and bright and dry. Okay, so you take some black paint. And you just do this. So kind of down here. All I'm doing is taking the very bottom edge of the house kind of doing like that adding a little bit of a edge and then of course you do want to outline the top edge of your snow okay thank you for that question absolutely perfect and then of course if this if this was all really light white like the rest of it is it, you'll have a slightly better effect of a, a slightly better um, result Okay, but hopefully that made sense and hopefully that helped, okay? Jan and Delvis, you're very welcome. Thank you for all you first timers and all of you that have come back a second or third or fourth or fifth or sixth or hundred, no, no, not hundred, can't be hundred because I don't have that many videos. Thank you so much. Awesome, Christian. You're very welcome. Glad that that helped. Yeah, there's lots of little subtle things you could do to really make a difference in a painting. And the vast majority of them, of them are actually pretty basic. So you are very welcome, okay? But yes, please send me pictures, folks. I want to see your, uh, your magical masterpieces, okay? But all right, guys, let's see Beth Jones. Thanks so much, Jesse. This was our first time joining you, my daughter, nine years old, and I really enjoyed this. Beth, you are very welcome. It is my pleasure. Thank you both for being here. Do stick around and maybe go back and watch some videos under the live tab check those out lots of really fun stuff there melissa shackleton merry christmas to you thank you so much cheryl Doucette, my pleasure thank you but all right guys it's time to call it donna baker had a blast she says we'll, we'll send you pictures soon one last thing folks please don't forget if you're not done yet 
Don't fret, the recorded version will, is available, will be available in just a couple minutes. I'm about to hit the finish button here on my, on my recording, and then I save it to the live tab, okay? So go look for that over there. But all right, everyone, thank you guys so much. I'm losing my voice a little bit, so I've got to go drink something, and I've got to go eat something and get my energy back. <laughs> all right, everyone, thank you guys. Have an awesome rest of the day, and I will see you guys all very soon. Maybe on New Year's. Bye-bye.